Waking up in a hotel room, missing a couple teeth, they're fake anyway, and um, girlfriend's gone, and I don't know what city I'm in. This is the Knocking Doors Down podcast, featuring celebrities, experts, and everyday people who have overcome adversities, including addiction, mental health, and trauma, to live purposeful lives. And that's what Knocking Doors Down is all about. Charlie Sheen, <laughs> sitting down with us on Knocking Doors Down. Who, who would have thunk it? That's right, everybody. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> so how are you doing? How's I'm doing, things? I'm doing good. You I'm look great. great. I feel good. Thank you. Yeah, it's good Thank to see. You. I know that, uh, you know, there was a, obviously a lot of stuff that was in there in the news for a while, a lot of concern, but uh, health is doing good, sobriety intact. It is. Yes, 100%. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be here today if it, if it wasn't. You can't show up and do this show loaded. <laughs> it's like the exposure would be really silly and embarrassing. You know? <laughs> Did you see him on the sober podcast, dude? I was sitting right um, next to him. There was not sober. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it um, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I've i i you know I've been uh, around sobriety for for a long time, uh, both you know and with with the program and on my own and and like that and um, and and it's it's. It never really meant what it means today um, when I was always uh, led to it. Right. When I was always, there was always consequences attached to it. I mean, there's always consequences, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. dying, there's that. But when it was like, you do this so you can continue doing this. Right. You know, so it was always, it, it, it never felt genuine, it never felt organic. And it, and it always had a ticking clock on it. Because I always felt like, okay, all right, I did this for them. And then when I finish what they need, whatever project or job or thing, um, then I get, you know, I get, I get my freedom of choice back and yeah. I can, I can, you know, really make a statement. You know? <laughs> um, when you're saying ticking clock now, are you meaning just, was it, was it legal matters or contractual matters for some of the projects you were working on or both? Both, yeah. both, yeah. Yeah, I felt like, okay, this is what they want, and so fine, I will adhere to, you know, I'll, 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 I'll toe the line. Um, but, but there was always, you know, when this is done, then I can disappear back into, right. you know, what I thought was the, the place I really... What about, what about, did they ask you how to get clean or how to get sober? Did they try to tell you how to do it or just that you needed to do it? Because that's one of the things that I... I believe that uh, over the years trying to get clean because I relapsed over and over again. Had it was always doing what people told me I should do or how to do it, and I really truly never got clean until I figured out what I needed to do for myself, and not what other people told me I needed to do and how to do it. Sure. You know? Yeah. Um, AA is not the best place for um, for <laughs> for a famous atheist. Um, <laughs> Just, I kept looking for that fucking chapter. What, you know? Um, There's your headline right there for a famous atheist. <laughs> famous fucking atheist. It's a quote. So, so yeah, um, but it's not a one size fits all. Sure. You know, yeah. it's, like, it's like saying that we all think the same, like our brains are built the same. They're just not. Right. Yeah. There's, there's such uniqueness involved. Um, and yet, sure, I would wear that as a, as a badge of, of defiance, you know, you don't understand me. But then when you start to surrender a little bit and see that there's such a commonality and there is, there is a link with people that, that have that nothing close to what somebody else might do for a living or, or the things they've in, been influenced by or exposed to or, or yeah. worship, you know. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, I guess it comes down to... Well, you can't say it comes down to one of the things <laughs> that was revealed to me was uh, was finding a way to 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 not be held hostage 24 hours a day by two things: shame and people pleasing. Mm -hmm. And you put those together, and you know I'm I'm living in Amsterdam basically you right, know right yeah um so you and you probably want me to elaborate on that <laughs> a little bit I I think shame and people pleasing are completely interwoven absolutely 
I agree 100% because I know I greatly struggled with that. Still do at times. Right. And, and, and what is shame really? It's, it's us writing a story about how someone's going to interpret or judge us without, with us having no idea what the outcome of the next moment is. Yeah. You know, we go into situations where, okay, all right, I'm convinced because they know, or I think they know that I did this or I'm thinking about doing that. And therefore that, that, that's going to affect everything that, 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 that reveals itself, yep. you know? And so we've written a story beginning, middle and end. It's like, Oh, I can't go there because maybe something that happened once, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, we, we, we get so attached to, to fables, right? That just, that, that have no basis in, in, in reality. And it's, I think a lot of it is fear-based. A lot of it is shame-based. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I mentioned people please, and I was thinking about this on the way over here, is, is because, you know, um, and I, I hate the term, especially as addicts. No, just as freaking human beings that, that, you know, maybe crossed that line or just did things a lot gnarlier than, than others, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, we, we, or at least I, I would create different versions of myself based on who I was dealing with or based on who I had to hide from or, yeah. or manipulate or, or impress or, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's just, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's hard to like point to one thing, but we don't have to point to one thing. It's a, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a constellation yeah. of, of it's, it, it really <laughs> is an of amalgam it. of circumstances. Yeah. You know, I mean, I know for me, definitely, uh, you know, Carlos, I don't know if you, you can write, I don't think we've talked much about this, but the, um, the play, like you said, the playing the character for certain people. Certain people wanted me to be a certain way, so I was a certain way for them. Sure. You know, for for my mom, it was okay, sober for mom. Dad, it was the different thing. It was the the guy that got the chicks because that impressed dad or whatever. What? Right. So right. it was wearing those different hats for different people, and you never really get to find yourself. You don't. You know, and it's exhausting. Oh, it's a full time, it's a full time <laughs> job with very few benefits. You know? There's no dental plan in that job. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, but then also coming over here, I was like, all right, there's a there, there there's a there's a there's a through line. There's a <laughs> there's an undercurrent of, um, of of mental health that that we'll be discussing today. And then I'm in my car alone laughing like, well, yeah, if you want to talk about <laughs> overcoming mental health issues, call this fucking guy. You know? <laughs> um, but no, but there, the other side of that is is that, uh, you know, I, I had the meltdown, the nervous breakdown uh, you know, uh, front and center on the world stage, you know? Yeah. So, so I, uh, yeah, I, I, I wish I could really <laughs> sit here and say, all right, here's what happened. I, I, I don't really know. I don't really know, but I did. But what I was saying is I did find some comedy value in like <laughs> calling this guy for mental health advice. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I, uh, the majority of it was ultimately linked to, to, to booze and, and, and to dope, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it, um, it, it was, you know, the, the, the one thing, and I'm not, you know, I'm not like trying to, you know, locate any sympathy, but just maybe just a, um, the one piece of it that still kind of irks me a little bit is, I went through all that and I behaved like a complete idiot and, and, you know, I was, I was fueled by, by all sorts of, um, you know, uh, situational realities that I was yeah. trying to navigate, trying to overcome. Um, but it's, you know, I went through that and instead, you know, people showed up in droves and overnight they'd written songs about me that were already on the freaking radio yeah. you know and that was kind of cool there was an energy to it it was like oh my gosh wow okay what's next um but there wasn't anybody there to say hey man um uh let's, cut shit yeah let's just let's <laughs> come over here let's 
Let's, there was nobody there to Take say, back, yeah, 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 this guy, this guy needs some help. He's in the middle of something. I do have to say that was one of the things about when it was going on, you know, people that winning the tiger blood and stuff like that. And then I would see some other footage and there was people that quote unquote your help or whatever that it kind of pissed me off from a standpoint of, you know, of having been around it and, and you know, family history. My dad, it was people that fueled him and it's just like somebody should have just like yeah hey you know what you might fire me but i love you and i don't want you to die yeah yeah i mean there was one guy out there and i and i um i developed such a resentment against him because i knew he was right um and i guess i don't know a whole lot about him i think maybe people died in his rehab or that's i wasn't there it's none of my business but um uh, pinsky right mm. dr drew yeah he was the only guy out there like going on the news or going on the talk shows and saying, here's what's going on with him. And I was, you know, of course, you don't know me and <laughs> we've never met. How can you, you, you know, diagnose me? Um, so yeah, so he was, he was there, man. He was out there. Um, but the, <laughs> the, the idea of, of our paths crossing or me actually taking pause to, to get in the same room with him, that was, I would have sooner uh, walked on the moon in what I'm wearing. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, and anyone that's deep in the disease knows that that part of your brain is like, you know, fuck off. You have no idea what you're talking about. Go away. This guy, you know. Yeah. But I mean, you're in a state of psychosis. I mean, don't you think that's kind of where you were too, Carlos? Yeah, I was, I was, I was in my world. I mean, nobody, nobody could have done it. I had loving parents and family and everybody tried. And they tried so many times. Um, I mean... It got to the point they just didn't believe in me no more. You know, I would mm. knock on the doors, hungry, wanting some food, and just slam the door in my face. You know, and just because I deserve it. I mean, they tried. I've lost two marriages because of it. You know, relationships with my kids. I've been in jail uh, numerous times, and but I, so many people tried. Um, even my best friends, my two best friends, they I never partied with them, and they were around. But when I was hard in, into my shit, they stayed away. You know, yeah. the people that loved me could not be around me because, and I didn't want to be around, be around them anyways because I was a mess, right? So, sure. um, but they, they tried. Um, it was just me. It was just, I wasn't ready. And I think anybody in addiction knows that no one can tell you to stop until you're absolutely ready. Yeah. And um, to me, you know, I call that chapter the night in my book. You know, it was just one night when it all turned, turned around for me. And I said, you know what? I have to find that long lasting change. And, and I did. So 14 years later, here I am. Good for you. Wow. Yeah, you talk about, uh, of course, loved ones. Because um, I'm curious, a lot of the folks that we just, uh, talk with, Charlie, there's there's always something in childhood that kind of, you, you, if you dig back and you've done a little bit of the work that makes a little bit of sense to a certain extent, you know? Uh, was it, you know, I mean, obviously growing up in a famous family, um, you know, your dad had some recorded stuff too, of course, of, of, of his, you know, some of his history. But what was it like for you with that? Because you really started pretty early on in life jumping into this crazy business, you know, show business. I so, did. So do you I think did. it was part of that way of growing up too that also played into it, created some of those insecurities? or? or? I think, well, I, I, I had a pretty normal childhood, uh, except for, you know, traveling most of the world w with dad on his locations. Mm -hmm. you know, right. he, he always put in his contract that the, the whole family would get plane tickets to... That's why my parents are married the 60 right two years you know what I'm saying um, so yeah um, so yeah I, I, I played baseball um, it, it was just it was uh, but but I there was a group that was you know a couple years older than me that, that were close to me you know neighborhood guys that happened to be you know Roblo Sean Penn right. and Emilio uh, and, and Judd was around and so I was just, I, I, I was still in high school watching these guys have in, in incredible instant overnight success. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, earned, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'd go out and, you know, I'd, I'd kind of be, you know, the little brother in the corner and there with all the girls in the thing and all the, you yeah. know, everything, everything awesome and shiny. Um, and I and I and I did make several vows uh, in those moments that that I was going to eclipse all of them 
and yeah. and show them how it was really done. Right. Did that go a little far? Maybe. Um, <laughs> Ultimately, uh, mission accomplished. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, but so yeah, so it did it 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 did ignite something in me that uh, that I, I maybe as an athlete that that competitive thing. Sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but man, you can't. <laughs> You can't warn anybody. You can't really tell someone what something's going to be like until they're actually in the middle of it. Yeah. And yeah. you can't, you know, I mean, uh, you know, some of the greatest hitters, you know, we've seen, we've seen them hit hundreds of home runs. And, and you ask them, you know, what's it like to hit a home run? And, yeah, they can lay it out, lay, lay out the physics for you and maybe some of the, you know, the emotional component. But, but until you do it, you don't know what it feels like, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's it's there's something similar. Um, I hate to call it fame. It just that sounds so just I, g- goopy. You know? <laughs> is that's go- goopy is still a word? Right? I mean, yeah. but it, it's fame though, right? That's, right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, I I I just um, I don't know. I I um, yeah. I wanted to be part of that so badly. And then when it finally happened, you know, there's never that moment to reflect on the few steps right before the arrival, right. you know. Um, and so, yeah, and I and I and I tell people, you know, you, you know, I'll t- t- talk to you know young actors or musicians or whatever, and and you can kind of you can see it in someone. You can kind of see that that this is this could be a person that is is going to be known for what they do and yeah. known by a lot of people you know and and they'll ask me for, like advice you know hey man what do you think i should do in the thing and i'm like yeah you know um keep doing what you're doing <laughs> um good luck uh, if it goes really bad and you still have my number reach out you know <laughs> but you can't really give me an adv- i mean there's there is advice i i give to you know, to, to, to my daughter's friends that, that ask me, you know, I'm like, okay, just for starters, um, and this is not a knock on either one of us, sure. I tell them no tattoos. Um, yeah, we're out. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> right? No tattoos, no cigarettes, uh, no crack. You know, just... <laughs> <laughs> just... No, because... Stay off the, the ink in the pipe. Yeah, thank good, you. Yeah. Stay yeah. off the ink in the pipe. That's a t-shirt. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you need 10% of those squirrels, Scarlett. <laughs> yes, done. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of all over the place here. But, that's all um, right. Uh, but let's bring it back. A, yeah, re- hit, refocus this, a, please. A, hitting a home run is fucking awesome for anyone that hasn't done it. So hopefully people get to play Little League. But... Um, Let's talk about, you bring up fame. So when things really started taking off, of course, people know a lot of the big name movies, which we do want to get in on some fun stories. But, you know, there's a lot of smaller projects that people don't realize, you know, they go, oh, well, you know, son of, of Martin Sheen and brother of Emilio Estevez. But it, you busted your freaking ass off early on. You were doing a lot of projects, a lot of auditions. You weren't getting them handed to you. No. You know? Thank you. Um, I think Thank the earliest you. thing I remember... No, you weren't credited in Apocalypse Now, but you, there was some footage of that, right, with uh, for Coppola when your dad was on that? Yeah, that was a lie. Um, I needed to fill a resume oh. when I started auditioning the story. Uh, in, the, okay. in the summer of, of 83. It was right after high school because I... People say, yeah, he dropped out. No, I finished, man. I didn't completely finish, but I was, I was a point and a half shy. And they were like, you got to go to summer school. And it was my first summer of freedom since I was like four. Mm-hmm. And, and I said, no, 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 no. Let me, um, well, first of all, I tried to get some points from Barrera, a guy I grew up with, because he had like 220. You need 200. I, you know, I was a point and a half shy. Mm-hmm. They said, you can't have Barrera's points. I'm like, whatever. And so <laughs> my parents said, we got to go to summer school. I said, no, no, no. All right. Let me audition this first summer. If it's a disaster, then... I'll, I'll go back, get those points, and I'll go to college, and I'll study film. And they were like, all right, good luck. And so uh, <laughs> I got the first freaking job that I went on, not having a clue about really what I was doing. My, my training ground was watching Dad on a set and then us mimicking that, making Super 8 films with that neighborhood crew. Okay. You know, So we kind of understood the process, sure, but didn't completely 
uh, have a sense of what it was going to be like, suddenly action, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, but uh, so I had to have this resume to go to these auditions and I just made shit up. <laughs> You know, I, I starred in plays I'd never even read. <laughs> and there was a casting line. He was like, oh, we did a production of that at the Lancashire. And I'm like, yeah, I can't focus on that yeah. right now. I got to learn these make lines, it you know. You make it, right? Yeah. <laughs> to be yes. or, or not to go there. Yeah. So, so <laughs> the apocalypse thing, uh, Emilio was in it for like 10 seconds. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, I was there for eight months. And they're not, it was dark. They're not going to know. All right. They're not going to know. All these years here I was, I thought I was like, oh, what? Is that him? <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, I did spend eight months in the Philippines oh. during Apocalypse. So I kind yeah. of, you know, that's yeah. a forgivable <laughs> resume yeah. lie, right? Yeah. Where you are now may not be where you came from. The choices you make today may spiral out of control or spin you in the right direction. Discover a riveting true story of how Carlos Vieira nearly destroyed his life and lived to tell about it. Stand up, stand firm, believe, make it happen, and live through the madness. Knocking doors down along the way. And don't miss others telling their powerful stories on our podcast. Visit kddmediacompany.com. Let's talk about what do you think the first, like, you know, you got, you got the first project made for TV movie? I don't no, recollect. Uh, no, the first thing, first thing was Grizzly 2, The, oh, the okay. Predator. Okay. Yeah, which I just, unless I dreamed this, I don't think I did. I think it's on Apple. It's on, TV? It's on oh. iTunes. Okay. Yeah, I think it, like, oh, after we're... all these years, they, they put it up there. Because it's me and George Clooney and Laura Dern. And there we are, like, on this, in this terrible video box thing. And I'm like, I didn't even watch the preview. <laughs> I didn't, I couldn't get to the remote fast <laughs> enough, you know. Um, but, yeah, and then while I was in Hungary... Um, uh, I got the call that I had gotten the role in Red Dawn. Yes. Because oh, yeah. I auditioned for that right before I left town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah How did that feel, getting that call? It was, it was cool, like the first five minutes. And then um, George and I, <laughs> George and I, um, <laughs> Clooney and I uh, hit, hit a few bars. And because, you know, he's... he's you know, mature and responsible. He goes home. They find me somewhere. I'm out there in the streets of Budapest trying to um, find a chicken. Not a not a live one, but just a cooked chicken because we heard a rumor there was this place where the guy cooked them all night and this and that. So we didn't find the chicken. Came back. We're probably the third worst hangover ever. He's like, he's like, what were the first two? Um, we'll get to those but, later. But yeah, I celebrated getting Red Dawn trying to find a, a, a chicken in Budapest. I mean, gosh, uh, we have different lives. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? There's nothing, there's nothing glamorous about that, is there? You, you, like, well, I mean, not, not even close. glamorous, but that is a hell of a story. You know, we're in Budapest. We're trying to find a chicken, a cooked and, chicken. And, and but, Laura was with me. Laura Durham was with me. Right. Like trying the whole time to get me back to the hotel. There's always that person when we're having the most fun right <laughs> like the night's over i'm like i don't see the sun <laughs> so sound familiar <laughs> we've done that a couple of times when i was still drinking but um anyways uh, so red dawn comes about really kind of uh, you know you're supporting role of course patrick swayze you know main character of that but things really start to kind of take off more from there so now are you getting more where instead of going auditions people are asking you to come in an audition no not yet and there was a there was a crucial um uh, moment in and around uh, grizzly and red dawn and I was only home for like three weeks maybe two weeks before we had to go to santa fe uh, I'm sorry, uh, Las Vegas, New Mexico, the other Las Vegas. Um, and um, <laughs> not so glamorous, Las Vegas. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, the, the, it's the, there's stories there. It's the reason I haven't written my book yet, you know, because it's it's the, the the really cool stuff is 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 yet to happen. Yeah. You know, I mean, all the salacious this and that, and all the, you know, all the special effects and pyrotechnics. That's yeah, I can write that fine, but I'm not. I think it'd be irresponsible to write a rock and roll memoir, you know? Sure. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so I get this one audition before I leave, and it's at the end of the day. 
and I'm, I'm working on the scene and I can't really figure it out because my character doesn't have any dialogue and this other character, um, this ancient Japanese man, he has even less. And so I go in, <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about, yeah. right? Yeah. And I audition for John Avildsen, and and he's coming off a of Rocky, you yeah. know. And I tank the audition, and I get back to my manager's manager agent, her apartment in Santa Monica. And I'm like, let me get a beer. That was a freaking mess. And she's like, ah, you get them next time. And the freaking phone rings. And it's, it's, it's them. It's, it's the casting lady and Avelson saying, how soon can he get into karate training? Oh, this karate did. kid. kid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask, yeah. didn't you pass by Ralph Macchio at the audition or something? I think he tells a story where he saw Sheen and he's like, oh, shit. No, Ralph had the job. Oh, okay. And Avelson came west to see if anybody could unseat him. Could could do something different or better or whatever, you know. And yeah. so, so he tells a story that we saw. Each other. Yeah, I want to say, and I could be misquoting. <laughs> I swore there was something, or maybe he had heard that they were talking he to you or something like heard. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I went to my dad and I said, "Hey, um, they want me to start karate training. This could be the next big thing in Hollywood. This could be my moment, you know." And he says, "Yeah, but, um, no, I'm sorry. It was, I'm wrong. It was right before." Budapest. Yeah, I got that confused. Okay. Um, cut. Uh, <laughs> anyway, he said, Dad said, um, okay, so uh, can you just do this thing in, in Budapest, you know, with the bear, and then, <laughs> and then start the other thing, you know? And we tried to do that, and they said, no, you got to start today. So I went back to Dad, and I said, um, I think I can F off the, the grizzly thing and just go into Miyagi-Bill, you know? Yeah. And and he was like, well, did, but you gave them your word. They're counting on you. And I'm like, yeah, but it's a thing with a bear and, they, 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 you know, these unknown actors I'll be working with. And he says, your word in this business is going to last a lot longer than one big film. Yeah. So I did the thing and then, you know, Red Dawn. And then after that, um, I I had to watch as that film and Ralph. And it just, it was, it was... And it was ex it was extra day. galactic, yeah, 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 and so, but I guess the other side of that is you know no disrespect to Ralph at all, sure, he's he's brilliant, um, but then having to be that guy for for a very long time, yeah, well, it's kind know? of it reminds me of the, and you know because you've worked with so many talented people, but there's people that fall into that. Uh, one of them pops in my head, one of my all time favorites because I love voiceover acting too. Mark Hamill, of course, Luke Skywalker in Star Wars, but kind of had that thing too. It's like, oh, here, here comes Luke fucking Skywalker. You know, people didn't give him other opportunities outside of that because it was right. so iconic. Sure. Did you ever hit a point with that, especially after, for example, I mean, you know. I'm sure you probably dealt with drunk people or over the years going, Ricky Vaughn, wild thing, what's going on, man? Yeah, that that that's actually a, a very accurate. Uh, <laughs> Nailed <laughs> that. Very yeah. Accurate, yeah. Um, I know that guy. <sighs> um, yeah, it's it's and it's not sad. It's just it's just you know it's it's just surrendering to to, to the reality of, of another situation. I I stopped going to baseball games. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I, I spend the whole game staring at my hands. Right, signing yeah. baseballs. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I, you know, you can't say no to these kids coming up. Sure. And then, come on. And so, so yeah. And then I'll spend a ton of dough on the great seats, and then I get run out of there, and then I go into a box, and then I'm I'm in a box. I don't smoke anymore, but at the time I'm in a box where I can't smoke watching it on TV and I'm like why didn't I stay home <laughs> why didn't I just freaking stay home you paid yeah. to sign autograph <laughs> exactly it's kind of exactly. reverse idea of it. exactly because people um, don't really know that you maybe don't know but you have such a huge love for baseball I do I do yeah where did it start with what players was it was it dad a baseball it was fan? dad yeah. yeah yeah and he was a, a Reds fan Really? Yeah, and so I fell in love with the Reds like in '74, and then okay. the next two years, you know, World Series champs and all this stuff, and then, then the drought, you know, <laughs> the droughts. We finally make the playoffs <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this past season, and and don't score. Yeah, don't score. 
I, yeah, I remember there were some hopeful times, the, the the late '80s, early '90s players like Barry Larkin and you know oh, yeah. stuff like that. There was some hope for them, but it just yeah, well, they yeah. won it in '90. Right. You know, so up until this past season, um, they had won a World Series uh, earlier or sooner right. than the Dodgers had. Right. You know. Yeah. I can't say that anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it uh, it's it's. I I started playing and. People talk about, you know, when someone picks up a baseball, you either know instantly how to handle it and throw it, or it's just something that doesn't, it doesn't fit with your thing, you know? Right. Um, and I, and I did, and I was never, you know, I, I, I wasn't built, well, look at the athletes today, I mean, right. you know, you got linebackers playing shortstop, you know? Yeah. Um, it's just a whole different science, oh, isn't it? Oh, um, God, yes. Yeah. I, I mean, you look at it across the board in eSport. LeBron James, is, people don't realize how large a human being he is to move the way he does. Oh, yeah. I mean, Kevin Durant, we could go on and on in multiple mm -hmm. sports. It's just the athlete it's, of today. It's absolutely insane. DK Metcalf, who plays for the Seattle Seahawks. Sure. I can't stand the Seahawks, but that dude is a freaking monster like it's crazy so yeah it's definitely yeah, he was throwing a fit on the sidelines the other day i don't blame him though i don't blame and then him. you caught a touchdown like two plays later i had my money on seattle too and they lose the first round in the playoffs so like okay you know, uh, whatever but anyways that's neither here nor there i'm actually kind of curious myself as to <clears throat> when when did the partying start Oh, okay. Like, when when was the first beer? When was the first joint? You know, like, how did that get going? Because you said Red Dawn called, then you went out, celebrated a couple of bars, so it was clearly before <laughs> that. Right. So and how old the, were you at that time? Sorry to cut you off. No, no, no. Uh, 18. Okay. 18. Oh, okay. 18. Yeah, but it started, um, whew. First joint was at uh, 10. But it was Malibu, man. That was a, you know, it was a I was going to say it's not really vibe. like frowned upon, you know. No, beach. no, and your friend's dad was growing it, and it was like right across right. the gully, you know. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, it, um, that, but then the booze didn't show up till, you know, because nobody could get any booze, like in junior high school. Sure. Or they call right. it uh, middle school, rather. Um, right. And so, but it was just beer, you know, Mickey's Big Mouth, and, uh, you know, I know we all... Well, drank seven and puked and couldn't. Bathtub full of big house. I know that. Yeah, so I like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm getting sick just thinking about it. <laughs> but the partying was actually um, interrupted for a while during junior high and during high school because of baseball. Mm -hmm. You know that I was on the team and I was doing well and I was pretty good. Um, so I didn't. I couldn't. I just didn't. It didn't fit in. It didn't yeah. fit in, you know. There was like there was a respect for the athletes, and you wanted to show up and right. do your best, and and um, yeah, you couldn't, you, you you just couldn't do both, mm -hmm. you know. And so, it didn't really start to to take hold until um, until I started doing work on location, mm. because then there was no one to like check on you yeah you know there was no one to 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 show up unexpectedly. Right. Are know? we talking about movies like? like platoon era and stuff like that or are we talking um, a little bit later on a little bit before you know we were we were, we were drinking a little bit on on um yeah boys next door okay me and matthew were uh we were going for, or max rather sorry we we're going yeah. pretty deep um and but you know that was uh penny spheris directed that and sure. at one point she came into the trailer and she's like guys okay you haven't you know we haven't derailed this yet but I see where this is going. So, you know, there was somebody there. Yeah. Someone there to, to, to slow it down a little, you know. Sure. Um, platoon, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we only partied like the first week. And then once we got literally into the jungle, um, we went from training right to the first day of shooting. Right. And it, there was, you were so tired, so exhausted, um, emotionally, physically. Um, and, and Platoon was a trip because I was going back to the Philippines, you know, just nine years later. Sure. To then, you know, do another, do, do my own War story movie. Yeah. Yeah, and, and narrate it. It's, yeah. just, it's just crazy that that would happen, you know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So then, um, uh, Eight Men Out was a mess. I can remember catching, like, one fly ball in three months. <laughs> I know I caught more, but that's, I was... You know, I, I was in the background the whole time, so I just had a, a, a you know, a pocket full of Percocet and 
booze in the in the, in the trailer. Right. You know, um, you didn't have to make contact every every swing. <laughs> right. You know, we, we can cut around that shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, but then Wall Street got 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 a little got a little deeper because. By the time I got to Wall Street, it was like Platoon had come out, we won those awards, and the thing, you know, things were starting to cook. And so I had a ton of resentment because I was stuck in New York with Oliver, you know, making another movie with him. And it really was getting in the way of enjoying this first tsunami of the Platoon success. Right. And so I think that affected a lot of the work in Wall Street. I watch it now and I'm like, yeah, okay, hammered, uh, hammered again. Oh, geez, really hammered. Um, you know, I mean, I was able to, to, to I don't want to say scrape by, but uh, I was able to, as a friend of mine likes to say, uh, run between the raindrops. You yeah. Know? yeah. Um, but God, again, again, the energy, the work, the, the commitment to that is, it's debilitating, you know? Yeah. But uh, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about Wall Street because, of course, you know, your dad was in there as well, but also working with Michael Douglas. Was there a point? I mean, and, of course, Oliver, uh, you know, he had his own run of stuff. Was there a sure. point that either of those gentlemen kind of called you on your shit and that? Because you had a lot of dialogue with your dad. Um, dad yeah, well, but once Dad showed up, I, I, I knew it was, you, you know, it was, it was a different energy. It was So you were wearing that different role for your dad. Exactly. Like you're talking about. Exactly, yeah. But, but also, you know, honoring the process and the film and the role and all sure. that stuff and, and the opportunity. Right. You know? Um, yeah, it's the, there, there were some moments, uh, you know, sitting in rehab or <laughs> this flamed out or that went bad or that person left and you're sitting there and you're, and you're just thinking, or I was thinking that this was not part of 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 what i imagined as a child <laughs> right. to have a dream life this 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 moment didn't didn't exist in that yeah. <laughs> that tapestry of of awesome you know well, i think it's good that you bring that up and also talking about shame too is that for anyone that all of us that seek sobriety had sit there in that i didn't picture life this is not what I dreamed of. Right. Uh, for me, it most certainly wasn't, you know, the puking every morning, for, you know, for a month consistently or whatever. Um, that shame and that it, it's okay to go, hey, my plan didn't go as I expected. Uh, you know, as they say, uh, you know, uh, tell God or just tell life in general your plan and see who laughs. Sure. You know, <laughs> so it's kind of, I think, killing some of that shame too, don't you? I do. I do. Yeah. Um but where was I <laughs> right before that? <laughs> you, so you were talking about the point of, of being in rehab and, and thinking oh, about oh, that oh, this wasn't the yeah. life you envisioned as a child. Yes. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, we rally and we're like, okay, as soon as, as, soon as I get out of here and then, you know, this is going to be different. That's going to be different. This is going to change. That person's going to change, you know. And yeah. that a lot of that doesn't happen, right? You know. Let me ask you, um, so Charlie, when you say you went to rehab, when the first time that you had to go to rehab or you went to rehab, was that your choice, or you ever pushed no, required got, to? Like, well, how tell got, that story of how that happened? When I you got inter said, intervened. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I thought I was going to my dad's fiftieth uh, birthday party. Of uh, yeah, at his at at their house. And I've been up all night, and I managed to get like you know that that twenty minute nap, Power you nap. know, yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And and I got there, and it was it was just kind of weird that the party was started at nine a.m. I'm like, all right, maybe they maybe they got somewhere to be. You Day know. drinking, <laughs> all about it. All right, all right. So I show up, and my mom comes out, and she she says, "Hi, sweetie, good to see you. Um, are you armed?" Huh? Crazy. I said, yeah, I'm always armed. But what's the, the, I mean, I'm not anymore, yeah. right? Um, yeah. But she's like, could you, could you, could you leave your your gun in the car? I'm like, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Put the gun in the car, and I come in. And there's no balloons. There's no cake. There's no anything that speaks screams party. You know, yeah. birthday party. And I kind of come into the living room, and there's my yoga teacher, my history teacher. Um, uh, 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 Rob, Emilio, maybe an uncle, um, and there's some guy named Ed I've never met, <laughs> and there's one spot open on the couch. 
and they leave me in and sit me down and and as hard as I was going like the week leading up to that you're not sure if you've already died right. if you're on the other side if this is your wake if you're dreaming if it's a nightmare if it's you know what I'm saying it's just yeah. it's it's hard to I couldn't get any footing so after about a half hour they were going around talking about they were already talking about, about me like like I was dead and then I you know and and yeah I was probably still high from the night before and then it dawned on me oh shit this is Oh, there's something at the on the on the other side of this presentation. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not going home today. Uh, yeah, so that was the first time. Um, but again, did it for all those people, you sure. know. And sorry, and, how old were you the first time? Uh, well, Dad's eighty, so thirty. 25. 25. Yeah. Did you you, you see the math? Did you see how quickly the math? That's good. Carry the two (laughs) at the six. If you don't mind me asking, Charlie, were you at uh, at that point? Were you, um, I mean, you knew you had a problem. Did you believe you had a problem when that happened? Or were you Um, still in denial? Or were you trying to hide it at that point? I was too young to have a problem. Okay. You know what I'm saying? In my mind, I was like, come on, we're just just getting going here. Just having fun. Yeah. Well, because it was probably very socially acceptable being in the life that you're in you're sure. around actors you're in movies this is what we do right, right. what do you mean i'm not I'm, I'm only 25 i'm not gonna never drink again right you know right. so i'm sure that that was probably going through your head too sure so. yeah um and i just come off a film with clint eastwood called the rookie, rookie. Mm-hmm. yeah great great script clint's amazing um but somehow that didn't I, I think he was already focused on Unforgiven, <laughs> which is the film he did right after that, to, yeah. you know? Um, anyway, at the very end of that, um, I was still kind of like, no, no, you guys are wrong. Come on, let's not, oh, everybody's overreacting. And, and then Dad said, there's a phone call for you. And it was Clint. Oh, shit. Sure. It was Clint Eastwood. So he just, he's like, hey, Charlie. Yeah. He's like, you got to go get some help, kid. Uh, and how do you, I mean, do it, what, what is, the, there's one right answer to that. Right. Uh, yeah. You got it. Yes, sir. I'm you not know? even abusing anything right now, but if he asked me to go again today, I'd be like, sure, dude. Yeah. I, I mean, got it. Right? I'm on my way. <laughs> you got it, Clint. Because <laughs> he's not wrong about it's that. Yeah. Clint, no, yeah, come yeah. on. Uh, God damn it, Mikey. All right. Get but, yourself down there in rehab. <laughs> But I got to <laughs> so this. You're too close. You're a little off on that one. But yeah, that's Gran Torino. Torino. No, that's <laughs> Gran Torino, Clint. That is Torino. Yeah, that's, that's Torino. Torino. That's Torino. Yeah. I do, yeah. I do yeah. okay, a page-appropriate, okay. Clint. Wow. Sorry to cut you off. I just love No, I, they sent me to this low-rent shithole freaking... I'm sorry, you can't say shithole anymore. You could, you could no, because I'm talking about something that was a shithole. <laughs> um, I thought you meant for the podcast. I was like, no, go ahead. <laughs> and it was kind of in a hospital that looked broken down and haunted and forgotten and we're in there and... So I was running with a, with a group of guys at the time, and we had this big plan that weekend to uh, host a, a judge a bikini contest in Palm Springs, right? And so, so and, and Nick Cage was part of the crew, you know, and they were already down there. All right. So um, I told this nurse, because I, I, I wasn't there, um, but there was nothing legal yet. And... I said, I gotta, I gotta get the Palm Springs. My, my crew is waiting for me. They're, they're, these people are counting on us with this, <laughs> this contest. And she's like, no, if you leave, you're gonna die. If you leave, you're gonna die. I'm like, that's a little dramatic. <laughs> so I said, all right, how about this? I'll be back here Monday morning at 8 a.m. or I owe you a million dollars. And she was like, you bullshitting me, boy. I said, no, I will shake on it. If, I'm, if I show up at 8.01, and don't, don't lock the door when you see me walking up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't make me show up at eight. Um, <laughs> I said, I will give you a million dollars. And she said, deal. So I got my shit together and got down to Palm Springs and we had one, see, because I had to have that last yeah, thing yeah, that I control. Right, your closure with it. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, was, I was back that Monday at uh, like 7.15 and she was just shaking her head, man. She was happy I didn't die 
and I was back, but you could see. She, <laughs> she, she was bummed out she didn't get the million. <laughs> she had the whole weekend to plan spending that yeah. cash, and I took that away from her. She's like, you know? how many fucking commas is that? Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it was that one last thing. Um, so that's kind of the long version of the first rehab experience. But then I still had to control it. I still had to, you know, tell them what I thought was right, and I, I left there kind of AMA, you know, and um, I don't know, man, I, I, I went to a pawn shop and bought a saxophone and wound up on a bus and I, the, everything had changed. I hadn't been on a bus in years and the thing to put the, the coin, it was a robot, you know what I'm saying? Mm. And they're literally chasing me. The, the orderlies are chasing me from the hospital. Anyway, um, called my assistant, I met him at Zucky's, we went through the phone book and I found a place that would do outpatient. And it was uh, it was right off Canaan, you mm -hmm. know, and I and I went there. I went there the same day, you know. It's like I guess I was feeling, you know, like okay, this is this is something I can do, but I just don't want to live in this broken down hospital. It was mm -hmm. horribly depressing, yeah, yeah. but doing it my way, doing it my way, sure. forcing my will, all that stuff. Um, but I stayed sober for a year, and then. I was at Nick's house, and uh, he, hasn't, he he was asleep, but, oh, God, what was the date? Anyway, whatever my date used to be, um, he had a Foster's lager in his fridge, and I'd seen it the night before, and I knew I had a year the next day. And so I was up early, and, no, you know, there was no lock on the fridge. I'm like, well, let's celebrate a year. <laughs> and then didn't drink for a couple months, and then out at out in restaurants and, you know, d d dinners and social stuff, just couldn't have been more uncomfortable. Uh -huh. Couldn't have, you know what I'm saying? Just, it yes. just, it was, I just boredom, knew. Was I, a lot of boredom? That, that was yeah, boredom. or just, I knew that, my that job. That was always my, I, I don't deal with boredom good at, uh, well at all. You get a little bored and I start thinking about that drink or that, or that drug, I should say. But, yeah. yeah. 5150 is power. The power to overcome. The power to persevere. The power to set your life on a course for success. When you're faced with the challenges life throws at you, you focus and do what is needed to go beyond what is required. So stand up, stand firm, believe, make it happen, and live through the madness knocking doors down along the way. We are 5150. Yeah, but, uh, but what I started doing is, you know, uh, bribing waitresses and waiters to put wine in a coffee mug. You know what mm. I'm saying? So I could be seen out and I'm still, you know, because everybody knew I'd gone to rehab. Right. I could still, and you start sneaking it and you, it's, it's, it's such, it's so, it's so diluted because you're like, oh, I'm, I'm really putting one over on all of them, but what are you really doing? Yeah. You know, it's, and then you have to then there's that whole secondary phase where you come back to your family and you're, you're like okay hey thanks for that intervention sorry you spent all that money i did a year but you know i think i can manage this i think i think i'm i think you know i, I went through all that never doing you know all that ecstasy again you know not drinking any more you know brown liquor right <laughs> brown brings me down white makes yeah. me right um yeah. and so yeah, and and again, it's 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 the performance aspect of yeah. it. It's you know, yeah, playing those different roles, uh, hiding the action. Do you do you think that we play those different roles too, so we don't have to end up feeling the shame because of in our minds we justify like you did for dad, you played this role for dad, you did this one for mom, maybe for Emilio, maybe for for Rob. When you say Rob, I'm assuming Rob Lowe. He was at were, the intervention, yeah, because yeah, he he'd gone just before me, and I think he had like eight months. Yeah, and he was raving about it. Yeah. But Rob, you know, looks awesome, hammered or sober, and so he was a chameleon with that stuff. You sure. Know? Yeah. Sure. He's a handsome fella. He but, is. But, yeah. I was, but I was like you, and Mikey can tell you, you know, was that socially uncomfortable. Wow. So I had to. Wow. I had to do that too. Yeah. You know, but then after that, I was like, that chick, I'm going to go talk to her. She'll go out with me. And if she doesn't, who cares? Her friend will. So I know, sure. you know, I know that same anxiety gives me that kind of flashback of, of having to, to you know 
Yeah, and it, and it's it's that thing we talked about earlier about writing a story about what a situation is going to be like because you're just convinced, and unless you know that this is added, then it's it's you're miserable. Yeah. You know, and then, but I tell people, I'm like, all right, stop writing stories you don't know the end to. Go through the experience, you own the experience, and then the next time you approach something similar, you got you got tools, you yeah. got knowledge, you got you got you, you yeah. know, um, and then <laughs> I've given all this great advice. And I'm, you know, I got to do something that same day. And I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. If I go there, this will happen for sure. Yeah. And then I'm like alone talking to myself. Dude, you just told this other person, <laughs> don't do that. You, you know, it's like I've, I, I've always believed yeah. that can't is the cancer of happen, right? Yeah. Unless, you know, you, you apply like really obvious stuff to that. You know, I can't. Um, fly jets, right? I can't split atoms. I can't, uh, you know, just stuff that's 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 based in reality. Sure. You know, but people so often lead with can't, and I think it smothers, it smothers a part of us that it's, it doesn't get to grow. You know. I mean, your guys' thoughts fear based. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. very much fear based. It is. Um, you know, I. Actually, it was you, Carlos, that when we had a talk when I was first starting to get towards my sobriety, and Carlos had been a mentor to me prior to us working together, you know, been friends over a decade, but um, was, yeah, I understand you're afraid of what it's like to be you without booze in your life. Right. You know. Yeah. That's one thing for, with me, though. I always, I always believed that I was more than what I was doing at the time, right? So 13 years of using, I mean, I would party with people, and I would party hard, so party so hard they were scared to ha hang out with me and they were like hardcore lifers you know and, and so they would always look at me and say carlos you know like i would tell them like, ah, after this bag or whatever i'm gonna eventually have to stop i gotta get back to my company i gotta get back to my wife at the time or whatever and they would tell me hey carlos just just accept it and you can't you can't fight it you're gonna be a you know a drug addict forever in my mind i was like no nah, maybe that's what they believe in themselves but to me <laughs> i always believed that one day i was gonna overcome it but it got bad. It got so bad that uh, book talks about it. You know, the uh, pistol uh, barrel, of the pistol. You know, it's it's uh, it got it got pretty bad for me. Where I thought I thought to myself at one at one point, you know what? Maybe I can. Maybe I can get out of this. But uh, but I go back to you know my childhood. You know, I created the whole brand fifty one fifty because my childhood. I mean, I was like you, a normal kid. You know, sports year round. You know, MVP. You know, I was class president. All that kind of good stuff. And then. But man, drugs just really, I mean, my, my drug of choice was cocaine. I, I hit it, I hit it hard, you oh, know, yeah. buying pounds at a, town, at a time. And I would party with everybody that, you know, all the stra strangers or whatever. And um, just constantly people would tell me, Carl, just accept that this is who you, you are. You can't fight, you know, don't fight it. You can't. And I always, deep down inside, believed that one day I would overcome it. And it wasn't easy, but I, I finally did. Yeah. yeah, no, I have a very vivid memory. I had this really nice condo and this big building on Wilshire and um, you know still had enough people around to co-sign everything that I wanted to do and um, at that point I was pretty much just living in pajamas leisure suits who cares about <laughs> fucking clothes you know <laughs> and there was a moment um, you know I was I was I got in deep into this um, absolute uh, pepper is that they still make that I the hot vodka, oh. spicy vodka. <laughs> yeah, I they don't make that now. I don't must. know. I don't, they you know, must. It's been been over a year, so I couldn't tell you. Well, I was I was needing you know amounts that that would would, would kill normal people. Sure, we, we all know. Mm -hmm. And I remember there was a big water glass, and and I I, I hit it pretty. Good. I actually downed it, and I'm sitting there and I'm waiting. And I'm looking for that thing. And it, and it wasn't there, and I, and I remember, and I was alone, and I was like, okay, well, this is, this is suddenly hopeless because I'm never going to feel that again, but I'm also never going to stop doing that again. And those moments existed in the same place, wow. and it was like, and I've never been suicidal, you sure, know, right, um, right. just luckily. You know, it's one thing, <laughs> you know, that wasn't Despite. You know, woven into my quilt. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if I guess if there is was going to be a moment where that was the the only solution, it was right there and then. You know, sure. but I get that. 
I, I suddenly understood complete and total despair in an environment that was superstar. Sure. You know? Um, but it's, uh, but then it's like, all right, we're never supposed to forget those, those life-changing yeah. moments. And then, you know, a month later, <laughs> there we are. Right. Right? It is just, uh, it's crazy, uh, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, and, I'll go ahead, no, I was just going to say that, that, um, why I'm, I'm so excited about just being alive right here, right yeah. now, today. And, and the, and the journey I've been on for you know, I've done anything for, for for three years. You know, um, and but the, but it wasn't. You know, uh, I didn't hijack a blimp and wind up on the news. You know, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't crash a car through City Hall. You know, there was yeah. nothing. There was no like super dramatic cataclysmic event. Um, I and I had I had had a really bad thing on my birthday. Darren was there. Um, and we did the Field of Dreams thing, sure. you know, and I started drinking, like, I don't know, a couple days before, and <laughs> just kept going. And I, I, I took on Wade Boggs in a drinking contest and was leading at one point. So that's how hard yeah. I was going, you know. And, and then just kind of the, my next memory is waking up in a hotel room, missing a couple teeth, they're fake anyway, and um, girlfriend's gone, and I don't know what city I'm in. Fuck. I had to call the desk and say, what city is this hotel in? They were like, Dallas. I'm like, damn, my last memory was Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so uncool. And, and just luckily, luckily, I didn't have a sense of time. I knew it was dark. I knew we had to leave in the morning. And I called the guys, I need tequila up here, like now. And, and he brought it, and, and then he said, uh, you missed cutoff by a minute. So I was almost about to go into full <laughs> freaking DTs yeah. in Iowa, Dallas. Um, <laughs> everybody gone, teeth gone, girl gone, <laughs> geography gone. So yeah, so anyway, so that was September. So that, I kind of came home from that, and I was like, all right, okay, okay, that was just, wow. I'm there with, like, oh, these, the, all these heroes from my childhood, and I remember none of it. Yeah. You know, that, that's, yeah. that's, that, that's, that's when you get down on yourself. That's yeah. when you're like, shit, man, shit. All you had to do was just pace yourself. Yeah. <laughs> pace ourselves. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, good, yeah. What is that? Good, good, right? good fucking luck, huh? Yeah. But it was, it was December 10th, and I'd forgotten that my, it was a Sunday, and I had and my daughter Sam needed to go to this, um, this appointment up in Thousand Oaks, and I was uh, in Van Nuys, and and I had to leave in an hour, and I'd already started drinking. You know, I'm a morning drinker, and that's the best time. Sorry, um, and you know, I've never I've never had a had a DUI. I've never, uh, you know, had a drunken weapons charge. I've never there's never been yeah. like that that super gnarly legal. I mean, yeah, I'd run up in court and stuff like that, right, right. but not because, you know, it didn't cost somebody their life. Right. Um, and so I called my, my, one of my best friends, Tony. I'm like, dude, you got to get here. We got to get Sam. We're going to be late. He, and he's like, you sound fine. I'm like, dude, I've already had two or three. I'm just, I can't. And so he came, got me. We picked her up, got her there on time and, and came home. This is actually the ninth. And I remember on the drive home with Tony driving and her in the back, and I thought, okay, this can't, this, this need, this can't happen again. You know what I'm saying? It was something very simple, but someone that you know I adore, that I, I you know, eat a bullet for. Yeah. Sorry, take a bullet for. <laughs> eat a bullet means yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, and I and I couldn't be available for something that she needed, and it really hit me in a way that was like. Okay, okay, we can do this. We can do this, you know. And I found like a half a Valium in a drawer and did that and just kind of just stayed, <laughs> just watched TV that whole day. And then, you know what I'm saying? And then I yeah. was like, all right, okay, we're, I promised myself we're doing this. And, and, it, and, it, it, and so it began, yeah. you know. Um, and and what I what I what I have I have a a montage 
of and I have like these three that I that I go to that I'm not just because I don't want to incriminate anybody else. Um, I can't really describe what they are, <laughs> but yeah, there are moments that I hang on to that if I decide, all right, it's been it's been it's been it's been a few years, you know, that, that maybe it wasn't that bad and. These are now brought up, um, like a viewmaster. Remember those? Yep. Yeah. Of course. And one just slides up, and it's like, and it, and it, it, it creates what I call the shame shivers. Yeah. But sometimes a shame shiver can be an asset to prevent you from if you if I can feel something from that long ago as though it just happened because of how it made me feel after, um, if I can use that. You know, if it was, if it, if that moment created so much pain and destruction and 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 dismay, then then okay, I own that moment. It doesn't inform my choices today. It doesn't dictate what I, you know, how I'm perceived, received, whatever, right? Sure. But if I had to go through that to own that that image, that experience, then hell yeah, I'm gonna keep it close by and call on it. If I decide I got a better plan than what I'm doing today, yeah, yeah. you know that was a long way of saying. Yeah, no, I get it, Charlie. You're you're, yeah. you're making me remind me of what works for me. You know, um, one of the things I've learned during those 13 years, re relapsing back and forth and and out of rehab and so forth, is you know, when I did relapse, I would get back to where I was really fast and then worse. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you could be. No matter if you were clean for a day or a month or a year, you know, yeah. you start using again and you get back to where you were and worse really fast. And the thought, you know, you know, comes to mind. If, if ever a thought comes to mind about using, I think, my, my Lord, if I get back to where I was and even worse than where I was at, I might as well just throw everything away because I'm going to lose it all. Yeah. Because I, I, I was right there anyways. And I got beautiful kids. I got a beautiful wife now. And. Um, you know, I, with my nonprofit, my you know, my the Carlos Vieira Foundation, my business, I, I employ a couple thousand people. I mean, if all of a sudden I just go back to what I was, everything's gone, and and everything, all the people that love me, and just my life's over. I know it is. So I, that's that one thing comes back because I I remember that night and those those times of where I was. It scares the hell out of me so you agree keeping some of that shit close oh shit yeah but but oh, yeah. not not to where it's like we're surrounded Keep, by ghouls that no, are haunting no, us no. right Just, you got to be able to you got to be able to remind yourself why you stopped and why you're why you're clean why right. you're staying clean right. and yeah. uh and all and so you have to kind of scare yourself once in a while by by thinking about those things now it's been it's been quite a bit of time now but hey one thing i i still drink i still got some nightmares we call them dreams or nightmares you know me doing a, a line of coke or hitting the pipe or doing something else wake up and it's like did i really do that you when know what i'm saying you're, you're, so you're grateful when you wake up <laughs> yeah. right? you realize okay that was yeah. just dreams because uh it's scary yeah sure. yeah so what i wanted to say is like you kind of got the reputation of you know party or the bad boy all sure. that good stuff did you feel like you needed to play into that even more than you wanted to maybe to a degree um Especially in a in a public setting, sure, you know, sure. Um, you have but, a reputation to maintain. Kind of yeah, yeah. Uh, but I never felt. I would always see that stuff, and you know, I stopped reading anything about me. I just I was like, what's the point? Yeah, this person doesn't know me. It's yeah. I can tell just from the preamble. <laughs> it's the story is, is it's it's going bad, yeah. and then I've allowed this person. To, to like hijack the moment, you know? Yeah, yeah. And right, like two seconds before that, I wasn't thinking about, I, I had no interest in his opinion about my behavior, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And yeah. So I kind of, yeah, I just stopped. Um, Brad Pitt did that years ago. He said, hey, if, 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 all I care about is a, is a cool photo. The stories are <laughs> all this shit. <laughs> <you know? laughs> and he's not wrong. Yeah. He's not no. wrong. Uh, and, but how many, like, uncool photos of brad are there i'm gonna go with zero i yeah, you know yeah, what i'm saying i don't, I don't <laughs> think he has he's one of those annoying people who just never take bad photos <laughs> right <laughs> right um and a guy that looks like that should not be that talented right. you, you don't know? get both you you thank get you both. you don't have brad <laughs> you jerk but but on that thing um yeah but i i always i i didn't feel like it was 
it was a costume I never felt comfortable in. Right. It was always ill fitted, you know. Yeah. I and and I was like, you know, because you know, we're we're I think a lot of our personality and our and and our our, our tendencies are, are are kind of formed when we're really young. Yep. Mm-hmm. And when you go through some shit really young, especially being bullied in elementary school or. You know, I had a stutter as a kid, and so I just, I knew all the freaking answers in the class. I just could never raise my hand again because w- w- what wouldn't come out? Sure. Right. You know? Sure. Yeah. Um, and I still, a little bit as an adult, but I don't give it the power that I get, gave it. You know, as a child, it was this m- mountain, this monster, this thing, and it paralyzed me, you know? Yeah. Which, and interestingly enough, um, when I first, those first few beers, you know, speech was fluid as hell. So I was like, oh. or at least in our own brain, it yeah. sounded fluid. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, but I was like, oh, there's a solution, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, but that that always, and then you know the bad boy thing and all that, and I and I always felt um, that it was just kind of a lazy, convenient label mm-hmm. to 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 toss on my personal life, professional life, um, and. I would always think, God, I did all this cool shit for a long time. And there was like this one month where <laughs> things went bad and got exposed and whatever. And that's all they want to talk about. Yeah. I yeah. guess, you know, if it, yeah. le- if it bleeds, it leads, right? Yeah. yeah. But um, Literally. I mean, you know, yeah. to quote yourself. Yeah. You know, the Tiger Blood reference. And, right. That yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, that wasn't even my material, which is another thing that was so bizarre about that really? whole thing. Yeah. I mean, people kind of know... I've never come out and said the gentleman's name. People know who it was. And I was watching highlights of him the night before. And the whole two and a half thing was already unraveling and whatever. And I um, had a cr- crew of guys around me. And, and we, you know, it was, it was a different kind of party because there was no booze. There was no drugs. But there was a ton of testosterone cream and a ton of working out. Yeah. And that huh. stuff like turned into... Sure. It, it turns into a roid rage yeah. in in really excessive quantities. And I didn't know that. And I was like, oh, I'm getting in shape. I'll just lather more yeah, on. Yeah, because I remember there's talk raids. about you wanting to do a Major League 3. And at, at that time, I think you were saying something like sure. that. When, the, when yes. you were using that cream, yeah. Yes. And um, so I was watching these highlights of this athlete <laughs> climb the ladder on a hitter. And I was like, I got to talk to this guy. I'm like, Tony... Get him on the phone tomorrow. And he did. And in that phone call, he tells me, you know, we're 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 different, man. We're not built like everybody else. You know, we're we're we have we have tiger blood. We have Adonis DNA, you know, we are winning. And I and I had this big interview like the next day. <laughs> we and heard it. it yeah. <laughs> and it went from that. <laughs> To that, <laughs> you know? Gotcha. Yeah. And if you think about, like, you know, what are they, uh, uh, s- seconds and inches, you know? Sure. And yes. I just, well, like, <laughs> like, hey, you know, that's really cool. I'm glad you, you see stuff that way. All right, look forward to meeting you one day. And then the interview could have been, all right, all right, this has gone bad. Anyway, how can we fix this? What's, you know, what's on your mind? Instead of what was on mine. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so what was the point to all that? <laughs> oh, it was about the, the it was the about bad the boy living thing. up to the bad yeah, boy. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. Um, and again, if they hadn't shown up in droves, and 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 you know, if the songs <laughs> weren't already on the radio, I that that thing could have been over in like four hours. Sure. You know, and then these other guys come to me like, hey. We want to make a lot of money on your nervous breakdown with merchandising, and the only, the best way to sell all that shit is for you to go on tour, is to tell your story on tour. And I'm like, well, what is a tour? I'm not a, I'm not a, I don't play music. What? Yeah. I'm not a stand-up. What? What is this tour gonna look like? What? That's up to you, man. But the people need to see you in person, and you know, celebrate this, this victory. What victory over what? I lost my, you know, all my cash, the best job in the world, really? my kids, my sanity. What was next? Yeah. My life? Yeah. You know? The the whole just how insane the the the, the winning thing that what what who who was who who won? Yeah. Who yeah. won? Right. You know? Not you, but like you said, there's people that are definitely trying to cash in off of it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and then, you know, when you hear that you, that you, you, well, you sold out the Fox in Detroit in five minutes, that's a rock star moment. Sure. You're like, oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, okay, that's something I've never done before. Well, how do how let's try Toronto. Let's try uh, Frisco. Let's try. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I said the one. The, I said the one place I'm not going to do is L.A. I'm not doing L.A. <laughs> so they do. They book me at like two shows in three nights at um, at Radio City. Yeah. Do the same show at the same place <laughs> 36 hours later. You know how stupid that is? <laughs> um, but first show was a train wreck. Second one we killed, you know? Yeah. But uh, that, was, that, was the, that was the child support tour, sure. basically, you sure. know? Um, mm. But yeah, and, and it's also, you know, before they rebooted the show and dude showed up and they got it going again, um, you know, look how many jobs were, were, were almost... Uh, ter- you know, so you're referencing good. two and a half men when yeah. you say the show, yeah, yeah, destroyed, yeah, you know, yeah. yeah. Can, can I ask how you fe- how did you feel about your replacement on the two and a half men? How did anything I said publicly about him um, what was what was unfair? It was unfair, and I, you know, I replaced Michael Fox on on Spin City, right? You know, yeah, in yeah, a much that. less yes, publicized. Yeah. Thing, right. um, his his you know Parkinson's yeah, yeah and yeah, he yeah, just yeah. couldn't do it anymore and they're like we don't want to stop hey what about you and I'm like cool um, so I do know that how difficult it is to come in in an established thing and something that people you know right. really liked the guy before you you right. know um, and I had done the Comedy Central roast you know mm-hmm. and that was kind of cool I'd never seen a roast before but I lied to them the whole way I'm like they were like, what'd you think of this guy's? And what about hers? I'm like, oh, they were awesome. They were great. I didn't want to be influenced by anything that others had done. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do any homework, you know? Yeah. I'd seen, like, you know, Dean Martin and Don Rickles, sure. J- Jerry Lewis, you know, those, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> those roasts. And they were awesome, yeah. you know? So I knew the structure of a roast, hello. Um, <laughs> and so I thought the people that, that they got and the time we had was so cool I invited everyone to my house. I was like, "Hey, let's watch this together." And then that same night, the new, the you know, two, two, two and a half part two, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> is on that same night. And they were all like, "God, he's really going to sit and." Well, first of all, they've never been invited to anybody's house that they did a roast with. Sure. But I thought, you know, because people were like, "Hey, man, were you offended by those jokes?" I'm like, yeah, no, it was all, I was in on the joke. What's wrong right. with you, you know? Yeah. How could you sit there and take all that? I'm like, well, that's it was part of my job description that yeah. night. Anyway, so we, we watched the roast and we all laughed. And then, and then Two and a Half came on. And uh, people were kind of watching me watch it more than sure, they were yeah. watching I, it. Sure, yeah, I can it, imagine you know? that, yeah. And I was, I, was, I, was, I was rooting for everybody. Seriously, yeah. I was, you know, because well, what's the point? In, I mean, it's not coming back. Yeah. Right, and you kind of, you know, you want your ex-wife to be happy, right? Yeah, you want your kids to be safe. Yeah. Um, so, I just felt like, um, when he when he blows up the the urn, you know, um, that should have been uh, the end of of part one, and it just should have said to be continued. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so there, but there was things about it. It was a little cheap that they like, you know, suddenly everybody that loved me all those years was now like, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> so, so <laughs> condescending and, yeah. and, and, and critical. And it yeah. was, that was super transparent. Did you take that as a shot? And do you think that it was, uh, oh God, why is it the producer? I know you guys had a little bit of the, obviously the falling out there. There <laughs> was didn't. kind of that personal shot for a little bit. Yes. But, yeah. But it's, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, unmotivated. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was, it, that, that was just evening the score. Gotcha. And that's fine. La, la, Laurie, Laurie. Yeah. yeah, Chuck. Yeah. Yeah, Chuck. Yeah. yeah. And I've, you know, I've had, I've had, a, I've had a, a, a couple good moments with Chuck since, good. you know. I'm glad yeah. to hear that. Yeah. And, um, yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's like you don't really realize what you had until you lose it. Yep. You know? Um, yeah. And, yeah, that was the greatest job in the world. Yeah. And I could still be doing it right now. <laughs> For what it's worth, I liked it better when you were on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> but I tell Asia, I tell wait, we watch reruns. And uh, when you're not on, I, I just change it. It's just not the same. It's, it's really not. To me, it's not Thank the you. same. It's not Thank you. For sure. But, but um, 
Yeah, with all, you know, with all these reboots and everything being about nostalgia and yeah. revisiting stuff, um, it just kind of feels like that's the one that's primed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That really, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, just, and not, not so much for us, but for the fans. Yeah, I would love to see you work with John again because I love his acting. He's I, brilliant. Yeah, He's brilliant. I've followed yeah. him in so many damn things. You know, even when he was playing Lex Luthor and all, you know all sure. the shit that he did, it's just no. He's you know. Well, first time we read that material together, it was it was it was magic. It was, yeah, yeah. There you was guys, nothing. There were no notes from him to me, vice versa. There was nothing. It's it's like we had been doing it for. 20 years together, yeah. you know, and, and, and Chuck saw that. We did it in his office, you know? Yeah. Because John had the freaking audition. Imagine that. So Chuck wanted to see the scene in his office, just the two of us. And as soon as the, John's first <laughs> two lines, I was like, Man, we're done. Why are we seeing anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and John and I worked together on the first Hot Shots. Yes, of know? course, yeah. which I love. The, the Topper Harley, one of my favorite characters. Thank you. Thank that you. you played. Um, speaking of, so like diff different roles, I just want to ask, you know, what, what are we looking, what are you looking to do now? Are we going to have maybe some more comedy stuff? We know we just saw the commercial you did with your dad. Oh, right on. Yeah. Right which, on. Which was great. Thank um, you. I, I loved anger management. I oh, loved thank that you. show to death. Thank you. But, uh, more serious roles, some comedy, are we going to steer away from acting? Are we focusing on the family time with the kids? You know, what's, what's going on for you now? What are you yeah, that's the best excuse people have when they're completely out of work. They're like, oh, I wanted to <laughs> spend more time with my kids. Um, <laughs> no, the opportunities haven't been there, and that's been okay because I, I think cosmically, uh, you know, I've been given this, this time to, yeah. to heal. Yeah. To, to just get right again, you know, and, and get focused and, 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 and get, get re-energized, yeah. you know, to, to do something cool because I'm, I'm you know, I'm like, I, there's a lot about life right now that feels freaking hopeless, man, and we're stuck in this place, and, and I know, and, you know, with the, forget the politics of it all, just the COVID of it yeah, all. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, you know, I... I there are certain days and I'm like I don't like where I'm living I don't like I just don't like who I am today and, I, and then I'm like dude stop gratitude check yeah. okay we're not on a ventilator today's a win you know what I'm saying yeah. anything else did you use the bathroom on your own extra bonus hell points hell yeah there you go <laughs> there you go yeah. but there you know it's like I want to help people I want to do something I want to contribute but you can't go anywhere you can't interact with anybody. It's 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 literally life and death, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I I think not to not to be self uh, aggrandizing, but but I I I think the the most good I can do um, is is through is 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 through my work as an actor. You know, I think that's the most people I could reach when they might need some escapism or some comedy or something cool yeah. again that they know they can rely on me for, you know? Yeah, for um, sure. so that's that's how I'm I I'd like to be of service <laughs> to everybody that's suffering, yeah. you know? Um but I can't do that uh just you know, at my house you know yeah. what i mean um but i think i think that that people are starting to get a sense that that you know i got my shit together again that i'm excited about being excited again yeah and yeah that yeah. uh yeah i i i there's a show that it's really cool that the um that the commercial with dad is out that was kind of an accident it was supposed to be a digital ad really yeah okay and, and he and i co-wrote it and so we shot it that's why it's not lit. It's not really shot well. It just looks like... <laughs> yeah, it looked like phone, but, Thank like, you. A, but, but yeah. like a high-quality phone, kind right. of just right. in the moment, <laughs> right. like, you know. It was only supposed to be seen on your phone or, <laughs> or your tablet, right? Right. And so um, they saw it, and they played it for the company, and they're like, well, this is awesome. Let's just put that on the air. So they did, and it is, it's, it's right in the middle of Dad and I uh, putting a show together that that's that's the two of us that's cool yeah and I would love and, that. and it's a it's a curb style docu comedy drama um where we're playing ourselves that's cool nice. yeah and it, it's rich it I, is rich uh, and we've been working on it for a while i've been hesitant to discuss it sure um didn't want to jinx it but i don't have that power you know right. i think people will be excited to hear that oh okay cool yeah that's 
that's something we're gonna we're gonna tune into. You yeah. Know? Uh, and I, you know, that like I've, we've talked about, there's so, been so many different projects that you've worked with your dad that are fabulous. And I really loved when you brought him in on Anger Management. Thank that you. For me, that kind of... Thank kinda, you. So, it's two of my favorite actors of all time working together, you Thank know. You. And, um, that was a hard, that was a hard undertaking, though. That, I'm sure. Yeah, we were, we were doing uh, 100 episodes in two and a half years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, to make this this syndication package. Yeah, and people don't realize that, that there was that many episodes of that show that were yeah. put out. Yeah, and it, the work. show suffered a little bit, um, but we had a we had a genius at the helm, uh, Bruce Helford. Yeah, great yeah. cast. Yeah, cast was terrific. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it uh, there's a reason that that format needs you know four days, yeah, five days, but four four minimum, you know. Yeah, and we were doing two shows a week. And sometimes pieces of a third show in that same week. And sure. I only knew what scene or what show we were in based on the clothes I was wearing. You know? Yeah. Um, and then, but that that was one that turned into a real health struggle. A real, because, you know, I'd, I'd been diagnosed and I was right. keeping it a secret. And there was all this other shit going on over here. And I was all this extortion. And, you know, there was so yeah. much stress. I could That imagine. to then go to work, you know, it's like... You know, I should be, you know, talking to my kids at lunch or my mom. And it was always with a lawyer, (laughs) you know, it's just Uh. like, and then, well, then, okay, if we don't do this, then this is going to happen. They need you on set. So, you know what I'm saying? It It was almost impossible to be focused. And so, you know, I stayed pretty, pretty drunk on that one. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see it. I can, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm sure if I went back, I'd probably tell difference between scenes. Maybe it'd be like, sure, oh, yeah. a little less dialogue. Well, I want to go back and look because I had I would have no idea. I guess I just um, go yeah, show how great of an actor you are, but it's like damn, you're very kind. Not, <laughs> I'm really kind. Well, but, Charlie, we want to. We're gonna leave you with the last uh, words of encouragement. We would like to get to some just just some qu- quick questions. Just answer them, you know, for fun, off the cuff, and. Uh, Boy, there's so much I think, guys, we want to talk with Charlie about. Hopefully, we could talk to you again down That'd the line. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I apologize. I talked the whole freaking time. No, You're that's the boy. <laughs> no one wants to yeah, hear from us, it, Charlie. They want to hear from you, man. <laughs> it could have been more of a conversation. It didn't have to be, that's you know, nice, nice. this was this 400 was perfect, monologues. Yes. No, this All was right. crazy. Uh, Mikey, why don't you start off with the, the rapid questions? All right. If you can have dinner with anybody you want, dead or alive, who would it be? Damn. Um, <laughs> just the one person? Just one person. Just one person. Um, one person. That is... Well, it's not like I can... I'm going to piss anybody off if they're dead. <laughs> um, Could be anyone in history. doesn't even matter. Or anyone alive. I... I um, can, it, can it be two people or no? All right, fine. We'll say two. We'll give you two. Can it, can it be JFK and Babe Ruth? That's Absolutely. pretty badass. And that's a dope that's answer. That's cool... Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's a, a juxtaposition. Cool. Right? Now I get why you want it, too. Babe, I get the Babe because it's Babe fucking Ruth, but JFK, what is it about him that fascinates you? I don't know. You? Just... just epic presence epic yeah. brain epic all of it you know just a really you know. you know what we've never done where we've allowed each other to but i think it'd be interesting jfk and john lennon okay because you talk <laughs> about so and it's not just for the, the you know the comic sorry the, the, you know bad joke but just that we're so switched on to some shit that was going on in the world right and there's a reason that what happened happened sure so Sure. As I take it a heavy route, but I do shit like that all the time. Carlos, you're up, man. What do you think? Well, I'm just looking at this question over here about who is your biggest inspiration or mentor in your life. Talk about. Um, let you answer that question. Uh, my dad. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. We, I, I kind of got, I got that just listening to you. That yeah. that's, that that what the answer would be. But uh, yeah, and we're closer. Cool. We're closer now than ever. Yeah. I bet. You know? that's yeah, good. it's and we have a lot of fun together. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, we're both a couple of kids, you know. Um, but you know, it's not, you know, we're 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 buddies when that's the moment, you know. Yeah. But he's still he's always dad, sure. you know. And if if I'm, you know, he he'll confuse spelling uh, untied and united, right? <laughs> but but anything anything. 
historically, politically, socially. Yeah. If you, if you need the answer and you need the right answer, he's your man. He, yeah. He's just got you that know? switched on, you know. Yeah. Gets it. Um, yeah. And I want to talk about your brother, too, because we all love Minute Work sitting at this table as well. So that's one thing Thank we'll you. have to earmark for another time. Oh, and X-Rated was great, too. Rated X. Rated X, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the movie that uh, Charlie did with his brother. All right, here we go. Any pet peeves? Shit that annoys you? Uh, yes. Give us some. <laughs> <laughs> He's, like, what? He's like, here's my yeah. list. Yeah. 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 Going on so how, much, how much uh, <laughs> battery do you have left? Uh, give um, us like two or three. Okay, tailgating. Tailgating? Tailgating. Yeah. Oh. Not oh. the fun Living thing at a football LA, game. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Tailgating. Yeah. It just it, 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 it there's so much interwoven into the mentality of of the tailgater. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. just yeah. Wow. yeah. And, and these days, man, I don't you know I don't look at anybody when they pass. I don't I don't get involved in anybody with there's a car involved sure. or anything. It's too dangerous. You know. Yeah. I love how you looked at me when you said that. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an aggressive driver. Okay. I'm an aggressive driver, so uh, I make it a point. When I'm coming up in the fast lane and no one's in the slow lane and you're going 60, I'm going to get on. I'm going to get on you. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> but that's just to make a point because I before I had this job, I was constantly driving, so I was on the road all the time, so that's what I did. But don't worry. I won't tailgate you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but that's a specific moment. I'm talking about like when traffic's going... 25. Oh, yeah. no, I don't do that. I and you got a that. guy, and it's like, where are you going that is not only more important than where I'm going, but also that I need to risk my safety for you to get there sure. sooner? Yeah, that requires you up my ass. So it's yeah, exactly. situational. I get what you yeah. mean. I get what you um, mean. But the, the one look I will always give the tailgater <laughs> is when we both wind up at the same red light. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> really did? Okay. Cool. Oh, shit. Mikey, go ahead. Um, all right. Let's do this one. What's your favorite hobby? Favorite hobby? Yeah. You mean like collecting something? Sure. Anything. Anything you got. Uh, or something we should be surprised yeah, What do you spend your time doing? What do you enjoy doing in your spare time? What, uh, what, what re excites me these days? <laughs> Minimizing. Yeah. Really? Minimizing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I mean... That I'll I'll plan certain days around going through this room today, yeah. <laughs> going through this part of the storage today, yeah. and it's just it's just I guess you know as you get older, not being attached to stuff, you know, and and really you know coming to terms with yeah. what do we really need, yeah. you know, when you get down to want versus need. You can you can empty a bunch of drawers, man. That's yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely. Um, but that's not really a hobby. Um, that's more of just a passionate thing for me now. Mm. Um, see, I I collected everything for so long, um, and then in times of you know whatever uh, financial down turns. Um, <laughs> I would sell all this stuff. Sure, yeah. So I have sitting on all this crap that I could just sell. So that was kind of cool. Absolutely, yeah. But it was it I, I, it, it was addictive um, collecting. Yeah. But it was cars. It was art. It was guns. It was baseball memorabilia. Uh, girls, um, that's not. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we didn't even get into that stuff today. Uh, hey, but yeah, it, guilty uh, as charged. So yeah, I've I've. Um, is reading a hobby or no? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. I've gotten back into reading and I really enjoy it. Any particular cool. genre? Uh, mostly um, uh, crime thrillers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like like detective thrillers, yeah. shit like that. Yeah. I love Michael Connelly, um, but I was reading Connelly long before the the show. Sure. You know? yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. I I. Um, I, I, I think if I didn't do what I wound up doing for a living that I would have pursued law enforcement. Uh -huh. oh, Not wow. that they would have let me, <laughs> but I would have pursued it. Yeah, you, know? yeah, you played good law enforcement as well as military, so. But I've never been, a, I've never had a chance to play a detective, like a really smart detective hunting somebody really, really dangerous. Then what was, the, what was your role in the movie you did with, uh, with Eastwood? I thought you were a detective in well, that. Well, I was, yeah, but we were specific to um, uh, G-Rides, to stolen oh, cars. Go, gotcha. So okay. it wasn't, we weren't really interacting right. with, we weren't, you know, taping right. off crime scenes. Right, um, right. Yeah. Okay. 
Well, Mr. Sheen, I know we, we've got to kind of bring you to it. Go ahead. Can I do, do you want me to leave with something? Yeah, leave us. Uh, leave the listeners with a positive note. Any of those out there that are struggling with, with addiction or, you know, newer to recovery, we actually did have a gentleman, I believe he's from Canada, that we put out there to ask questions, and he really wanted to know that, you know, what was the positive that you can put out there for people that, that, that enter recovery and, and are seeking their sobriety? Um, it's never too late to get a fresh start. Yeah. Regardless, it doesn't matter what you've been through. It doesn't matter where you know where where you know where you convinced that you're you, you might be stuck. Um, uh, you know, any story can be unwritten. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, for sure. And then you know another thing that I that I really that I I I try to live by. Um, is is common sense and common courtesy yeah common sense and common courtesy both both, both have essentially become extinct you yeah. know mm -hmm. um but it's the 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 more i'm attached to 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 the, those two elements uh in in the day you know it's it's the 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 better i know i was in in you know wherever that day took me yeah. And people will dismiss it as oh that's that's simple and that's whatever that's just, no if it's, if you really take a step back and you look at so many situations this thing at the Capitol there was no common sense <laughs> there was no common courtesy <laughs> right <Yeah>. none <laughs> uh, 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 for yeah. you know from the perpetrators yeah. um, and and there there was none of that that led to that you know yeah. It's Absolutely. it sounds simple, but I but I know tomorrow. The more I have of that today, the better tomorrow is going to be. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah, know. Sure. Well, I mean, um, I saw it when you were walking in here. People like are doing something, then they kind of stop and they're like taken back. It's like, damn, that's crazy. Well, yeah, I'm I'm finding out that the mask doesn't do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Mask and a hat. I. I buy like an extra five seconds, you know? <laughs> but as soon as I speak... Like, it's a wrap. <laughs> we were in line at the DMV, Lola and I, and there's and the line, it, it serpentines, you know? So you keep yeah. passing the same people, like at Disneyland, sure. right? Yeah. And the second time past this guy, and now we're like, we're stuck with him. Right. We're not moving, you know? And he's like... Is anybody? Because you, you can't wear glasses with a mask. Right. Because everything looks like, it's yeah. like, it's like we're see. all watching porn. <laughs> um, and, and, and so I got the glasses off, and I didn't wear a hat because I was taking a photo with the DMV that yeah, day. Yeah, sure. For my real ID. Right, you know? right. Um, for my papers. <laughs> and uh, and he, now he's staring at me. And he says, anybody tell you? You look a lot like Charlie Sheen. <laughs> and I'm like, was that a compliment? He's like, oh, hell yeah. He's super cool. I'm like... <laughs> yeah, I, I I hear it occasionally, and he's heard my voice now, and and he's just kind of like nodding. <laughs> he was like, "Have a good day, man." I'm like, "You have a better one, bro." This is L.A. Um, You're Charlie, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I'm his brother Ramon. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Oh, right. shit. Well, you know, people are probably wondering why are we with Charlie again? We're good friends. What the now. hell? It's like. We're sending each other Christmas cards. We're best now. friends now. He's coming for Thanksgiving this year. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know if it's just me, but since we've talked less, Two and a Half Men is on all the time now. Like uh, with you, the, the better version. Oh, with thank you. you. Thank and you. I swear, I and I call my mom because she's a big fan, and I'm like, are you, she, or she'll text me or something. I'm like, do you notice that since we've talked, it's on all the time now? Or did we just not notice? She goes, no, it's on all the time now. You got to talk to him again. <laughs> I'm just like, okay. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Now it's following you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now but now that's fine because I fucking love it. You. As long as, you know, it's the right seasons. That's, that's ah, it. thank you. Of course. Thank you. So now things you're opening up, uh, how's that treating you, parenthood and everything? Of course, by the time people see this, we've already talked with Denise. What a wonderful lady. I was sitting there afterwards. She is so wonderful and complimentary. I'm like, no wonder Charlie fell in love with you. Charming lady. <laughs> and of course, your beautiful daughters, which we were joking about, uh, uh, getting Lola her driver's license. Yes. Yes. So. When, you, when you show up with a new car with a bow on it, you expect that that uh, you know, it, it speeds up the process right. for her to get enthusiastic about the various steps to get her license. What was know? her reaction? What, 
Oh, she was blown away. Oh, okay. She was, and you know, I, her and I had talked about going to the dealer and test driving and all this. And then I just, one day, I, I called my buddy Tony. I was like, bro, let's, let's get this done, you know? And, uh, and Sam, her older sister, was so instrumental in, in, because Sam showed up at the dealership. We're keeping it a big secret from Lola, you know? And, and so I was looking at this specific, you know, uh, uh, like a small SUV. Mm-hmm. And Sam was like, I don't know, Dad. I think, I think she's kind of, you know, wishing in this direction. Uh, she'd prefer this. Uh, so we did. So Sam really, you know, um, she was she was the player of the game that day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't realize, though, that Sam and Lolo, because my kids are 13 months apart, and they're okay. pretty close. Like 14 them. apart, yeah. 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 How, so I had to know, what was that like for you? Because it's like you got two in diapers at the same time, <laughs> not sleeping, the, the baby things and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. yeah it, it, it was a lot. Um, but... And, and, you know, life happens and people make decisions and, and, and you know, things go how they're supposed to or how they're not supposed to. But uh, the, the, the thing you didn't mention in the, in the middle of the two in diapers and all of that was a separation. Oh, that yeah. happened when they were that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were a yeah. little bit older. So it was like, <laughs> it was a lot. There was a lot, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm glad you had a, a time with Denise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, she was great. Yeah, and we're friends these days. Yeah. yeah. yeah we don't. It's uh, because you know the the, the 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 kids suffer the most. Sure. That's if, what she if, said. If the parents can't, you know, be parents, be adults. Yeah. You know? No, and it's um, good that you guys are. In, well, she had nothing but great things to say about you as well. So that's that's good. You know, it's when mutual. you guys. Yeah. It's yeah. Mutual. Same Thank with you and your ex too. It took some work. Yeah. No. It does. It takes it took, work. Took a it lot does. of work. We yeah. had a lot of fucking baggage. Sure. Mine were a little bit older, but but now we're in such a great place with it. But what she said, like you, you know, you don't badmouth each other to the kids. You're just supportive and love the kids. Sure. You know? Sure. But it, but then when they start playing you against each other, <laughs> when the kids start you know playing the yeah. favorite this side or 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 needing help. Because of a, a, you know, an edict or or right. or something that's been enforced in their house, and you're kind of like, you know, you want to help and you want right. to, you know, be the peacekeeper or peacemaker, um, but you also don't want to uh, disrespect, you know, a decision that's been made or or, or you know, um, whatever's going on. That, that 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 I wasn't present for. Exactly. You know. I think that, Dad might be winning right now with the car if they were playing. <laughs> well, each I other. mean, if she ever decides to drive it, I suppose. You know. You know what, Dad? I thought about it. I love this thing. <laughs> no, but you're right. It's a son of a bitch, Charlie. It's because uh, I remember the kid's mom texted me. Oh, I had the kids picking up a lot around here, so when they come to your house, uh, you know, maybe go light on them. I'm like. Look, they have to accept that their reality is that they have two different homes that come with responsibilities and coming home to dad on Sunday is chore day. They're going to have to do that shit. Sure. You know, or whatever it is, you know, or, hey, uh, you know, to use my daughter as an example fictitiously here, but got in trouble. So she's on restriction for five days. So no phone, no going to the friends. It's like. Shit, you got to carry that stuff over. Sometimes you have to, when you have that crossover of time, it's like you have to kind of adhere to the, to show you're a united front, which sometimes can be hard because it's like, sure, she dropped, a, you know, she spilled something. It's not the end of the world. She can still go play at the park. But you're like, fuck, okay. You know, you yeah. kind of fall in line with that partnership of co-parenting. And if you don't fall in line and you say, look, I wasn't there. There's two sides to the story. Um, I want you to have fun while you're here this weekend. Um, so when you go home, if they put us in different rooms, our stories have to match. <laughs> okay? Let's go over it again. Right. Yes. Okay. Who was there? And what time was that? <laughs> right. 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 No, admit George from the fucking story. Uh, so last time we talked, yeah, yeah, you know, I went back through our conversation, Charlie, which was, was just a blast. And a lot of people got a lot of great Did they? Oh, out good. Of the vulnerability. Good. Um, we got a lot of messages and... Um, uh, you know, even one guy is pretty funny. Wow, boy, I didn't use, like as if we coerced you into a conversation. It was like, no, Charlie was open and wanted to talk. Oh, okay, I'm just really worried about his health, and then it was, it was really sweet. But it's like, yeah, we were we were sitting there like, 
okay, Shane, you're going to do this. We weren't thing. like licking doorknobs or anything. We're very cautious. Yeah. You know, of course. All that kind yeah. of yeah. stuff. So. Um, but one of the areas that we didn't really touch on, and I, I uh, appreciate you uh, wanting to talk about it, but having the, the HIV diagnosis, that area, and kind of some things that people don't understand what really comes with it. I'm, I'm you know... Of course, for me, the first person that was of notoriety talking with uh, our, our mutual friend Darren Prince, who works with Magic Johnson, sure. you know, that was that was my first eye-opening situation to it. So, um, yeah, I'm not re- really sure where to start with it. I know your health is good. You're doing your medication and everything. I do. Else. Yeah, yeah. I and you it. look great. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I mean, the technology of, of you know within the science uh, has has gotten to the point where um, you know that they say it's it's as manageable as, as diabetes. You know. Mm-hmm. Oh. Um, yeah. So so I'm super grateful sure. that 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 um, you know that I I mean I it's it happened and it sucks and it is it's 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 part of my life. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't like insist it away or <laughs> you know what I mean. It's not yes. like it's it's on it's on board. And you know we're gonna fight this thing together, mm-hmm. um, but uh, but I just my my heart goes out to the to the just all the victims and and the families that, that didn't have access to the medication right. that, that that myself and the rest of the HIV community has today. You know even even magic um, mm-hmm. that wasn't that there that stuff was not <laughs> cutting right. edge. It yeah. was pretty bare bones. It was like. Good luck. Yeah, yeah you that know, ninety two, I think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, and that's got to be terrifying too, because when you think about it, it's you know you would see movies where people like the Straight Outta Compton with Eazy E or right. Freddie Mercury, like when sure. they got it, it was back then where like you just said it was good luck. So that that's got to be terrifying, I'm sure. But you know, I mean, still even here in the news now, it was probably like, but now we can, it's manageable, right? Yeah, but it was still. Um, because for years, if you have you know had any kind of you know active sex life, sure, um, sure, you'd always go to the doctor and and he yeah. <laughs> you're doing a physical. And he's yeah. like, give me a check for HIV. And you're like, okay, yeah. uh, and then you're waiting that week. Yes, like you know right, every time right. the phone rings. Um, but um, so it was interesting because I knew something was going on, and suddenly my body just kind of felt. Like I wasn't completely connected to it, you mm-hmm. know, and it mm. was, it was a headache that I don't have words to put on, um, to attach to to the severity of it. Mm-hmm. Um, it was, and and then it was night sweats, and 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 then I felt I just it was, I felt like I felt like I was dying. Mm-hmm. I didn't know from what, you know. I thought it was a brain tumor or meningitis or who the hell knows. So I finally, a buddy of mine finally. Pulled me out of bed, got me to the hospital. So it took a little bit. Um, and uh, have you ever had a spinal tap? <laughs> I have seen one. Hey, wow. Uh, yeah. What did Hemingway say about to be a man, you got to plant a tree, have a son, and fight a bull? bull. Yeah, add spinal <laughs> tap to that. <laughs> wow. It's the kind of thing you can't quite wriggle away from, you know? Yeah. And it's right in the middle of your everything. Oh, gosh. Yeah, it's gnarly. Because um, that was initially, you were thinking meningitis. Yeah, I, I thought related. it was, yeah. Um, was it consistent night sweats? Or was it just like once a week, once a month? No, it was, it was, like like three, it was three nights in a row. Oh. And not like, oh, gosh, I'm I'm a little damp. No, like the pillow, you know, like ringing oh, that shit bad. out. Uh, it was awful. Oh. Um, so when I'm in the, <laughs> the hospital... And and the guy comes in and he says, "Here it is. Here's what here's what we've uncovered, what we've unearthed." Um, it was like, "Oh fuck, 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 fuck," because you know, you, you immediately thinking about the rest of your life, and you know, forget like living in the in the moment. Sure, you know, yeah. it's like, "Oh geez, now what?" Um, yeah, you go to the absolute, you, just just a whole a universe of 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 just you know, why me? And what now? And how will I? And how will they? And how will it? And anyway, but then I took a step back. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, it's not an inoperable brain tumor. Mm-hmm. It's not liver cancer. It's not, it's not like all these 
terminal yeah. uh, d- diagnoses, you know. Right. Um, so I kind of had to embrace that. I had to kind of wrap my arms around that a little bit and mm-hmm. say, okay, this is this is treatable, yeah. you know. Um, and thank and, God, yeah, 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 and and you know, addressed in you know, caught in time to to be so, right? You know, um, and then. You know, uh, I've been very fortunate um, with the with the, you know w- the expert um, uh, medical staff that I've that, that I had access to. Yes, you yes. know, um, and also it um, I had a couple of girlfriends uh, long term uh, d- d- during mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. after the diagnosis, mm-hmm. um, and so yeah, it was cool to have a normal relationship um and not have have everything be about that right that that it didn't that that it wasn't like a constant uh, scarlet letter you Mm -hmm. know um but i'm not going to say it's like the coolest thing for your dating life (laughs) yeah yeah so tell me about yourself well um i'm an actor i like long walks on the beach exactly yeah so yeah so it's it's um but but uh as i said i'm super grateful for the the technology of the medicine Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it doesn't um you know, you have to you have to experiment with a couple combinations um, mm. and and figure out what's right for your makeup, for your physiology. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it uh, there's no there's no side effects. There's no. That's awesome. Yeah. And when um, they say it's just like diabetes, like you just treat it, that, I'm sure that was a relief to hear that, right? Yeah. That was like, oh. Yeah. Right. Anything that the, that day and those few days after in that hospital that weren't that weren't right. Hey, you know, I uh, hope you've had it, as much fun as, as you think you should have. Right, right. Um, it's time to really lock up your affairs. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We have a pounding yeah. the guy. Like, well, <laughs> hopefully hanging these marks that ain't picking it up, right? Uh, okay. <laughs> 5150 is power. The power to overcome. The power to persevere. The power to set your life on a course for success. When you're faced with the challenges life throws at you, You focus and do what is needed to go beyond what is required. So stand up, stand firm, believe, make it happen, and live through the madness knocking doors down along the way. We are 5150. So after finding that out, who are the first people that you contact, uh, you know, is it? Is it the kids? Is it yeah, mom? Yeah, dad, it was immediate it... family. Yeah, and my mom was with me oh, during wow, the hospital okay. stay. Yeah, and she she was a rock through it. Yeah, yeah, she was awesome. Mm-hmm. That's what moms awesome. do, though. That's right? what they I do. I was going to say, my mom. Yeah, That's she would have been. Do. You know, yeah, we didn't ask you about this last time because you know we talked more about about your dad, obviously, and uh, Emilio, but uh, we're mama's boys. Were you a mama's boy? <laughs> I got mom right here. <laughs> I got mom. I got mom right here. Do you? Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice. Charlie Brown. See, best same friends. We have same mom. tattoos. <laughs> Amazing. Um, was I a mama's boy? Yeah, yeah. Still am to a degree. Are you? Um, well, as a kid growing up, she. It's you know my parents are have been together for geez, <laughs> sixty years or something crazy, and um, and so if you looked at them as those two houses. That, that that I would live between. It was still the same house. Yeah. But mom was a, a lot more forgiving, a lot more just you know, she she was cool with our stories matching when we went back to dad and say, okay, here's how we solved it, you know, or yes, we did it here to 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 whatever you laid down. Um, whatever. Uh, no, but it um uh, yeah, we've always been super close and, and just a really, really amazing relationship. That's incredible. What about That's with cool. your, your siblings? You know, because we talked about Emilio, but we didn't talk about your brother and sister really the last time around. Was it a thing that, you know, you sat down with all of them and, and conversed with or is just kind of mom knew? And I know how my mom would be like, all right, everybody, this is what's going on with Jace. She would get on the horn and let everyone know and, you know. Um, she let a couple of them know. Uh, from the hospital, mm. but then we, you know, we really didn't want it to get out. We yeah, had to keep it contained, you know, mm-hmm. before you can actually, you know, report as you're supposed to legally and all that stuff. Right. So we needed it to be really um, the fewer, 
people in the in the loop the better just for that that initial sure. thing um but then yeah i i decided to to call the immediate family uh, personally mm. you know it was like yeah yeah good news and bad news yeah <laughs> you know yeah. good news is i'm gonna live everything's gonna be <laughs> yeah. okay yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah bad news um so it uh yeah, and everybody has just been nothing but loving and supportive and, and like that, you know. They, they 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 rallied to my cause, you know. That helps. That helps. Oh yeah. Helps. You, you yeah. mentioned um, the reporting. A lot of people don't know that. What can you explain? What that is? That once you do get a diagnosis, you have to. to you do. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So what is that process? I, I there's a I, number I you call, and it's a um, it's a reporting system that by law. And so uh, I have my lawyer take care of that. And oh, yeah, that's interesting. And that's got to be more tough for somebody in your situation because you're obviously a celebrity, you're sure. famous. So it's like if any of that were to happen to somebody who's not, it's just kind of like, you know, but when Charlie Sheen, it's just so much bigger and, you know, sure. rumors start and all that. So that's got to be more tough too. So it's almost just kind of like, Stay with the family, stay focused on that, keep a positive mindset. Because that really does help your health. If you're in a negative mindset or a positive, that can play a huge impact on just not even with the diagnosis, just with anything in life, your anxiety, your mental well-being, all of that. Of course. You know, so that's, yeah, that's got to be tough. But you sound like you're in good spirits. And I am I in good you spirits. Are, yeah, you are. Yeah, like thank I said, you. So <laughs> good, good. We didn't talk any uh, much about, I know you, you mentioned about maybe doing... <laughs> One of the one of the things that cracked me up uh, looking back at part one was uh, so you got an atheist and you're taking them into a twelve step program. Are you still a twelve step worker? Do you still work the steps? Meetings you know, of any kind? Uh, Where is it at for you? How do you maintain the sobriety? I'm a meeting guy. Yeah, I'm I'm not, and um, but that's just me. That's yeah, just yeah. Uh, and I and I was a meeting guy for a very long time, um, but most of it was mandated. Most of it was mm. ordered. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it, you know, it did, it, it, that, that'll that create some built-in resentment, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I've been actually recently, I don't know where this came from, but just the thought of going back to a meeting just by choice, right. just alone, just showing up, mm -hmm. <laughs> what's going on, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because I, I've... I've never really had that experience, you know. Yeah. It's always been work related or legally, you know, sure, uh, sure. enforced and all this other stuff. Um, but yeah, no. But it's funny um, if you, you know, the the amount of <laughs> years and the amount of meetings and the amount of um, you know twelve step sober interaction um, is a, for me is a lot. It's yeah. a lot. I got introduced to this thing when I was twenty two. All right. You know, 23. Um, so it, it's, it's amazing the amount of stuff that, that, that sticks that, that you can call back and say, oh, 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 that's what they were talking about. Well, that applies to what's going on right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there is, you know, there, there, there's some gold that I definitely harvested. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I, I had more bad experiences um, because of the fame. Right. Um, then I did uh, good ones. Yeah. You know? My sponsor and I were joking about, especially with the ability of Zoom now, like, we should just get something going because he worked in the, the music industry management side and was like, we should just get something going, like a Zoom thing for celebs so they don't get dicked with, you know? So it's like something that they could just go because he's he's seen it happen where somebody goes in and then someone's doing a share and, and then it's like, hey, remember when you were in Two and a half men, that was that was awesome, you know, and it's like you don't actually get to do your share. Yeah. To come out, to be that vulnerable situation where it's just like, thank God, thank you, you know, thanks for letting me get that out, guys. You or know, so. yeah, or at the break, someone someone's asking for some help and um and so you 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 know, you you lay it on them and then you can kind of see them just waiting, waiting, and then they, they can they're nodding, they're like, you know. And then it comes out, so, uh, no, that's great, great, thanks. Um, 
So what was it like working on Platoon? <laughs> Bro, it got not me. not why I'm here. It got me here. So what else you, you tell me. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, what did acting do? I was, what was it? You were in Turkey hunting down a chicken at night or something? Oh, no, they were Budapest. looking for a chicken. Budapest. Budapest. Looking for a looking chicken. Looking for a chicken at 3 a.m. with Laura Dern. Yeah. yeah good like, times. It's like, that's what it did. Good times. I was going to tell you, too. I was was um we were i was talking to jason about this too and i don't think the you know the impact talking to you had on us because someone was like hey doing a pilot and i want you to be in it and i was just like you know what charlie sheen told me if you got tattoos probably can't <laughs> so okay <laughs> i didn't pass it up because of that i'm just kidding i said it sarcastically but it was just like yes we know you talk blah 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 i'm just like hey charlie said it i'm just saying like if anybody knows what they're doing in hollywood it's him jeez but Wait, did you get the job? Uh, no, it wasn't like a professional. It was just like a little it fun was an thing. Indie Don't film, worry. I'm not an actor. Okay. <laughs> it was an yeah, film. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a little fun. He was going to play a pool shark. <laughs> do you shoot pool? You... I don't, but I can act like yeah. it. Yeah. They can make it look good. Yeah, you know, we don't have to do the jacket, Paul Newman dim the uh, Tom Cruise training and actually be able to play the fucking game to do the role. You know? <laughs> yeah, I did a cameo playing a billiards shark. And I shot a little bit of pool. You uh -huh. ever shoot billiards? No. Uh, no. That is so difficult. Uh, but I had this dude, he was a hustler, his name was Fast Kelly, and he came to my house, and so he would literally just set up the table, and uh, who was directing? Uh, uh, Christopher Coppola was directing. Oh, I was awesome. in a scene with Michael Bean, and basically I'm, I'm the Machiavellian uh, portal that he has to make it past to get to the next level, whatever, I didn't read the whole script. And so this guy, Fast Kelly, he set up shots, and, and, and Christopher filmed it, and all I would do is hit it exactly where he said to hit it. Mm. And it, when there was no CGI, it was, it was poetry, man. It was Jeez. gnarly. Yeah. I didn't keep playing after that. I only yeah. played for like that one week. Do you right. like it? Do you enjoy it? No. I don't either. I never no. cared for it. Everyone's like, oh, we'll get a pool table and blah, blah, blah. It's like, I, yeah, I mean, whatever, if you want to. I never pool, cared for pool. pool tables become like what, what, what trampolines Yes. Were when we were kids. Yes. I only used them when other people came over. All right. And, and yeah. Pool tables, they take up so much space. And if you want to get rid of it, you got to find like 25 guys to yeah, fucking right. move. <laughs> move this know? big Jesus. place. Fuck. Mikey, can you help me move the pool? Oh, I can't. I got this thing. <laughs> yeah. um, I'll call you tomorrow, though. Let <laughs> right. you know how it goes. Like, yeah, no. I'm you know what? For me, the funny thing when you're saying that's like, once I stopped drinking, I have never gone to a pool table ever again. You know, that I think of it's like, this is the absolutely most uninteresting thing, interesting. you know? Wow. Does anybody have a Shakespeare book? Let's go read that right Sure. Now. It's like, I could, I could care less. It's some of those, those behaviors that were connected. It's like, don't do them anymore. You know, shit like horseshoes. It's like, I don't get it. Yeah. My brother loves that. And what's the cornhole? It's like... Cornhole's not bad. I don't mind cornhole. Yeah. It's like, like cornhole? No. Yeah, I mean, I I played a couple times. I don't know that it, it belongs on television. <laughs> oh, right. I know. I, I know. just saw that I mean, the other I'm, day. I'm, I'm I'm happy for the people that made it that far <laughs> with the, with that with those skills. Awesome. Right. But it, I just I can't get, I can't get to the remote fast enough. It's great. It's great. They'll throw it. They'll throw the beanbag. <sighs> All right, and they're like. You know, and it's just like, are you winded? You just threw a fucking bean bag. Yeah, you know, I'm not not bashing them or anything, but I saw it on TV, and I'm just like, okay, all right. So anything's getting my on favorite nowadays. part of it is that I worked in professional wrestling, televised, did TV comedy uh, commentary for two years, and I love that form of entertainment. But, I, but watching that is the commentators for the cornhole. All right, I step the rocky. <laughs> And he's known for his spin on the back. Oh, he didn't get the spin. You know, it's like these motherfuckers are trying to sell it. It's like, you got, you are a professional, but it's like, I can't get it. I can't get into it. You know? I'm not trying to sound, you know, arrogant or anything, but when I see it on TV, I'm like, I, I, I've done better than that. I could do better than that. These guys are on TV. It's in the backyard right now. Come on. Do, I'll do they ace it every time? No. No. No, they don't ace it every There's time. Misses? And some it's like right you know way off the hole or missed it completely and i'm just like this is like me and my brother-in-law doing you know and it's not anything special do the same guys shoot on the same receiver yeah it's like uh, <clears> or do they or do they go back and forth so like if I me think. and jason were on a team i would be on this side and he would be on that side and okay. if you and darren were on a team you'd be right here and darren would be over there so we're Got on it. opposite sides like so that. your beanbag can be sitting like on the ledge or near the hole mm -hmm. 
for my shot. Yeah. Yes. So, you, that, so I can either can knock it out. try to knock it off mm -hmm. or make mine in yep. or both. Yep. You know what's going to happen next time we see you? We're going to end up playing cornhole. <laughs> we're going to uh, do this again, but we're going to set up cornhole. We're just going to play cornhole. <laughs> um, how, has, how did we get on cornhole? Oh, pool, pool, pool table, pool, pool. trampolines. Yeah. Yeah. Shit. I don't. That we don't do <laughs> trampolines. <laughs> um, how in you know post diagnosis sobriety has your your relationship changed with the family? Obviously with the girls tremendously. Sure. Um, but you know your mom, dad, siblings. They, you know, um, they don't pry. They don't. They, they don't. Um, they, you know, they kind of feel like if I got something going on with it that they need to hear, I'll, I'll deliver it, mm. you know? Sure. Um, they, but, but they're, they, they're aware, you know, right. they, they, they know that there's this daily thing I have to deal with, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but, uh, but it, it, it is, it is so manageable, as I said, you know? I mean, it is, there is that one shitty part of the day in the morning, mm. you know, um, I used to call the meds uh, uh, Team Six. You know? <laughs> Why Team Six? Because I would, do, you know, I would say, "All right, guys, let's the, let's uh, let's go kill some bad guys." Yeah. You know, SEAL Team Six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I gave yeah. the meds a nickname. Um, yeah. <laughs> get to work. Um, but yeah, it. Um, yeah, they they don't. It it doesn't really ever come up. Healthy boundaries is what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. This family has healthy boundaries. They do. Yeah. 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 Speaking of uh, Team Six, uh, one of my movies that I loved you in because you, your character was freaking great in it, Navy Seal. Oh, thank you. We thank didn't you. get to talk about it. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> well, you know Rob O'Neill, you know the guy that, that killed Bin Laden. Um, yes. He uh, was going to join the Marine Corps, mm. and he saw Navy Seals, and he was like, "No, no, no, I want to do that." Really? Yeah. So he became a Navy Seal because of that film. Yeah. And so I kind of feel like I was just going to say. So you had a, had had a pretty big role in putting those two bullets into dude's just a, face. Let's do that. Let's get just Jason. 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 Hey, round of applause. Thank you, Charlie. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah. And, and good, good shooting, Rob. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. A, it's a trip because somebody I, I don't remember close to me. You know, it really stuck out to them that you said the best thing you can do of service now at this point in life. The last time we talked was get back out there, get back to work. Um, and you saying that uh, took me back to that conversation because they were like, he said to me, well, how much of, you know, do you, it wasn't a, a knock, it was a question, you know, there was just, just a conversation about it. And I said, well, I know what film and, and TV did for me, you know, it was the shit that kept me out of trouble in addition to sports, um, you know, so that's pretty ironic that this thing that you did inspired a situation that ended up history. Yeah. Yeah, a, a global moment in time. What was that? Uh, what was the uh, training like for that movie? Because you guys got in there. And it was. Some... It wasn't like it was on Platoon, mm. you know. But it was. Um, I mean, y yeah, we, we, we would do uh, weapons training. We would do uh, underwater training. We would do hand to hand stuff. Um, but I was kind of ahead of the curve, you know, sure. with most of the actors with the weapons stuff. Sure. Um, I used to be a gun guy, you know, yeah, not, really not a, not a hunter, but a shooter. Um, yeah. and not anymore. Um, but yeah, it wasn't, it, it, it wasn't so intense that people, you know, walked away limping or crying or <laughs> not like on platoon, um, a lot of limping and crying on platoon, but, uh, but yeah, they, they, they kind of wanted us to just get a sense of, of, of the, the, the team mentality, the team responsibilities, you know, if what, what each specialist, what their role is mm. on a particular mission. And, um, you know, and then the, the, the one thing that they, that they preached was uh, situation dictates, which I think is such a cool thing to use in life, not just in a, in a, in a military environment. Situation dictates. You jump out of a plane, you're supposed to meet Jones and get the map and give him, you know, whatever, and you hit the ground, Jones has been blown in half, there's no map, you're completely overrun. The situation dictates, figure something else out fucking yeah. <laughs> fast. Yeah. That's life, man, situation yeah. dictates. 
you know, oh, real ahead. quick, that really is incredible. The more I'm thinking about it, like he became what he became because of the movie you did, and he was the one who killed Bin Laden. It's That's bananas. incredible. It's bananas, yeah. And, wow. and and he's he's actually given me personal credit um, <laughs> in his interviews and his and his wow. his, his talks and. All that. That's yeah. a trip. Yeah. Did but you know you that know, beforehand, you know. or did somebody end up telling you, and you're just kind of like, what the fuck? We, uh, he and I uh, got friendly uh, over the phone through a mutual friend, uh, a country rocker named Tim Montana. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so Rob and I started talking. Then we finally met at a dinner that was epic. Um, it was like one of those nights where I was so glad I hadn't stopped drinking yet. Because <laughs> it had to happen the way it happened. Sure. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Come on. Yeah. Of course. And um, and he, and he that he presented that to me in person. So I got yeah. to hear from him sitting two feet away that's about so, the Navy SEAL that's crazy. movie that's connection. Crazy. With How did that yeah, make you feel when you heard that? Were you just like... I how do you yeah, yeah I mean I, that's one of the coolest moments a guy's Seriously ever man experience. goodness. Um, yeah. That's, that's when you look in there and go, that's right, I'm a fucking patriot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, 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 I did contribute. <laughs> You're that's, welcome. Yeah. <laughs> that's fucking incredible, man. Oh, shit. <clears throat> um, oh, you wanted to bring up the question about someone entering sobriety. Right. Um, not going to say her name, but somebody very near and dear to me okay. is... I want to say three weeks, maybe a month sober now, coming off a three-year cocaine addiction. Okay. And she wanted me to specifically ask you, because she knew you and I were talking, what advice would you give her for what she's going through right now? She's, like I said, about three weeks clean. Cocaine was her poison. Okay. Mm -hmm. How how old is she? She is... Don't get mad if I get it wrong. I want to say 24. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard. I mean, just from my experience, mm-hmm. um, if she has any illusion or delusion about um, that this is just a stop, this rehab is just a stop to kind of get people off her back, and she's got plans when she gets out to, to get back to what she was doing, mm-hmm. um, if that's the case, uh, I recommend smoking it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Seriously. For, forget, you know, dicking around with, you know, whiffing lines and, and what, you know, cocoa pot. Just fucking smoke it, man. Base that shit up. Why because one of two things will happen. You'll fucking die or <laughs> you will lose everything that, that, that you loved or hoped to love at so much faster and uh-huh. in, in, in such a, 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 a moment of absolute disassemblage um it's not even a word but you know what i'm saying yeah. and so i don't recommend she actually does right, that, right but right, i'm just saying if she has any plans i right. always tell people well just smoke it you'll be done in six months if you're alive you know right. yeah, yeah the other thing that you know the the, the i think the more mature uh <laughs> sane <laughs> that was humor folks charlie's fucking kidding well insane, no but, but it's if you're but gonna do it truth in it you know yeah, yeah. it is um, true that's my experience because mm. if you're gonna piss away your life anyways might as well get right to it let's sure. why waste time sure. you want five to the chest or just one to the head thank you, you. Yeah. Yeah. money ball right yeah. 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 yeah money ball exactly no i i but um yeah, uh, th- th- there's another thing to consider that's just practical and real and true and 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 rampant. Fentanyl. Mm, yeah. Fentanyl. You yeah. like you know you keep fucking around with street drugs these days. I mean, it's there's a ninety percent chance that it's gonna have fentanyl. Yeah. We, and there's a ninety percent chance you're not gonna survive it. That's yeah. fucking terrifying. We were just talking about that. I we had an expert to yeah. come in from the Fresno area. That was our topic. We were wanting to understand that, and you know, even from the the position of the dealer, why they do it, why, let alone especially these younger kids and anyone in general, would be like, all right, I might have fentanyl. I don't know what the, the split and cut is, and they're they're fucking gone before they hit the ground. Yeah, yeah. I j- yeah. The thing is with fentanyl, and our talk about it was, I've. Cocaine was my drug of choice as well. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, you know, we yes, had to make those awkward visits to, you know, the drug dealer's house and all that and whatnot. But I was a consistent customer for my drug dealer. He knew that I was going to be there Friday or Saturday. Sure. Why put fentanyl in if it's going to kill me? You're going to lose a customer, essentially losing business. Don't you want me to fiend for it so I can call you again in five hours and buy another ball? Why fent- Why put fentanyl in it? 
that's what I don't get. And I still don't understand it, to be honest with you. It's like fentanyl is everywhere now. It scares the shit out of me. I'm yeah. glad I stopped when I did. Because that evolved. scares the shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, I, 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 don't, I don't get it. I don't know. Even uh, the gentleman we talked to. Yeah. It's like, I don't get it. You know, my standpoint was, okay, let's say you have 100 clients this drug dealer does and 10 of the 100 die, but the other 90 get the ultimate high and they shared it with their friends that got the ultimate high. They're totally fine with attrition Mm. as long as they keep fucking coming back and they're like, you know, dealer X is the the ultimate, you know, I got more high than ever and people just, you know, because we were all have suffered from substance abuse and addiction and... So we know where the mind goes. You just gen- generally don't give a fuck. You only have point. to be wrong once. Exactly. Yeah. It's like and a bank robber. You only got to get caught once <laughs> and you're done. Yeah. You only have to be wrong once. You can, you can have that amazing high a hundred times and, you know, 101 and you're done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, it takes me back to, I don't know how many times I got behind the wheel after driving and it, you know, made it home safe. Don't remember blackout. Fuck, I got home. How did that happen? You go into that hole of shame. And then you do the shit again, but that one time, and it happened, and, you know, next thing it's, you know, ambulance off to the hospital, you know, so, yeah. Fentanyl is relatively new in street drugs, right? Relatively new? In the last, what, five? Yeah, five something like that, because yeah. I remember, like, I, that was never a thought. But if you were to think about it, like, if you were still, or if I were still really into it, right. Coke, would it, would it matter? If you heard about fentanyl, like you would still go get it, right? I I don't know. I don't just, know either. It wasn't That's, a part of the conversation. Exactly. When, I, I didn't even know what it was back then. And I'm like, just hearing about it re- like a couple months ago. Because I quit right, dope. I quit drugs uh, long before I quit drinking. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, so yeah, so it was nowhere near anybody's radar. Right. You know. Yeah, that's just uh, yeah, because you know it's a hospital used. <laughs> You know, serious medication. And yeah. Like, Which is actually right. five years today what killed Prince. Yeah. That's Prince, today? Five years today. Wow. Yeah, as yeah. of this recording. And then uh, Tom as Petty As of this too. recording, yeah. Tom Petty was fentanyl. Mm-hmm. Seriously? Oh, I yeah. didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So, two of my favorite musicians. And, wow. Uh, both set to see, ironically set to see both of them. Uh, they canceled shows prior to going and seeing them, and then they were gone. Mm. Damn. And they were gone. It's, yeah, I, I remember um, those first news reports and the, the first reports on, on Prince. The guy literally said, a prince has died. And I'm like, okay, I'm not sure why that's newsworthy. I'm sure he was a good dude. Um, <laughs> and then I kept like for, for like a half an hour, I'm kind of sort of paying attention, but not as much because, you know, Prince died. Mm-hmm. Some guy, you know, some Saudi royalty or something, right? <laughs> right. And, uh, yeah, but then then they dropped the A. And yeah. it was like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's, you know? Yeah. And it just, you know, I think it's, it's also, it's, it, there's, there's so many cautionary tales for everyone to, 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 to learn from, mm-hmm. you know? And, and your friend that's, that, that's in the middle of it, that's in rehab right now, right? Or, uh, going to rehab Go- right now. Oh, okay. It's kind of... She's doing things a little backwards. She's got the sponsor doing the meetings, then going to rehab in like a month just for job purposes. And we've explained to her that you can't be fired from, but she, she, method of madness, as long as you're staying sober, whatever, you sure. do what you know you got to do. Nobody knows you better than you. So if this is working for you, great. She knows she has my full support. So she's out in the world doing Correct. this. Correct. Okay, yeah. that's harder. Yeah, yeah. That's I would harder think so. and more yeah. commendable. Yeah. So because people are like, I'm in rehab. I got tw- 21 days sober. I'm like, anyone can stay sober in rehab. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm glad you're there. But, I think uh, mine would have took earlier because I never did rehab. It was just there. There was legitimately no way it was going to happen. I was a sole provider, post divorce. Oh, you, you couldn't know. go away. Yeah, there was. You couldn't no be gone. Way. Yeah, and I was working in radio, and if you don't know people in radio, it's like you're you're getting by the skin of your teeth. Let mm. alone when you're divorced and alimony and child support. Sure. So it was like, yeah, there was no way. So it was a lot of white knuckling at first. Wow. So that, that's you know, if you go, did you relapse? Of course, I was fucking white knuckling at first. Yeah. Of course, you relapse. You know, until I really got in for me working it, working the program, it didn't take. So. But yeah, it is, an, it is a backwards situation, so. It's very backwards, and you know, I, like I said, if it works for you, then by all means, but 
you got my number. I don't, I, I've never had a sponsor, you know, nor have I been the sponsoree, but call me, you know, if you ever feel sure. like, you know, you're Jones and or whatever, I'll come pick you up. We'll go get lunch or something. Take your mind off it. But, um, yeah, no, like it's, it's kind of just in her hands, but she's got her number. She's got support, all that stuff. Just wanted to hear what Mr. Sheen had to... But she's doing good. She's doing... So three weeks? Yeah, three weeks. I don't in, think it's been a full month. In the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, good for her. Mm -hmm. Good for her. Absolutely. What's been... A, what works for you then? Being that you don't do 12-step program, or at least not meetings anymore, but you did execute the full 12 steps. Oh, right? yeah. Several yeah. times. <laughs> it was four and five fun? Um, for those who don't know, that's when you <laughs> that's when you start your list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you own your shit and part in it all, and it's like that's the part where you're like, oh fuck, okay. I mean, I have a production company called Ninth Step. Really? Yeah. We haven't produced anything yet. You know, it's a tax <laughs> thing right now. But uh, but yeah, at some point you will see that on something that I do. Oh, Ninth nice. Step. Yeah. So come on, <clears throat> this does it, yeah. it 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 found its way in. Right. Right. You know. Yeah. But ninth step is is just is just continual. Yeah, that's daily. Yeah, you know. Hey, sorry about earlier ads. Just uh, nothing to do with you. You know. <laughs> All right. Um, I I think we talked about this last time. I hold. I have these 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 scenarios. Um, what I can remember from them, and it's plenty. Um, and I just I I think I mentioned last time. I don't I don't let them. Um, rule me through through shame or or allow them to inform uh, negative choices but i keep them freaking close and there's yeah. a few that are so choice they're so <laughs> juicy and and just mind numbing that i actually <laughs> that i was the star of of those those vignettes you know yeah. and so i keep those close because I was talking to my, my ex-wife Brooke the other day, and you know she's been in and out, but she's doing great. Awesome. And I'm, you know, we're we're finally really good friends as well, like good. me and Denise, you know. Yeah, good. Um, and she, you know, she says, "Well, how you know how how are you doing it?" And I'm like, "I just I made a decision that this is what I had to do to just to stay sane and 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 contribute, you know, and be available for the people I care about the most." Mm -hmm. And I said, I said, Brooke, you know, I could, you know, I, 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 like the other night I had this fantasy that started going around and maybe I was drinking a little scotch at night, you know, and, I, and I'll dress it up with a nice glass and those big cubes they sell oh, these yeah. days. Yeah, and I'll just put a little water in it and I'll just, you know, kind of, I've, I've been, I've had a great day and that's my reward and I'll sleep great. And, but then realistically, how long could I maintain that <laughs> before the ice cubes are gone, right? Uh -huh. it, the glass has gotten taller, you know? Yeah. Forget the water. Oh, forget the it. water. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. Water. It's what like, you know, water's water? for fish, ice is for injuries. What the fuck, right? <laughs> and so, <laughs> so, it's like, and then, then, how many times can I tell the person at, at, at my, my neighborhood supermarket yeah, yeah, and no, I'm just, I got this friend, and, you know, he's, he's a gift, you know, his right. gift, this is, and he's, uh, he lost his license, or he's in a wheelchair, he can't drive, so I'm just, you know what I'm saying, yeah. how many lies can I tell how many? about why I'm buying this booze, if ultimately someone's going to snap a photo, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and, and, and the worst part of it, forget all the obvious consequences, the worst part will be someone that has come to absolutely rely on me 24-7 is going to call. That night, one of those nights, and say, holy shit, someone was supposed to be here. They're not. I'm here. I need your help. And I can't, I can't be available. Mm -hmm. And then I got to tell 15 lies about why. And you know what I'm saying? It just how it, and that's just, a, you know, just the thought of doing something that, 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 you know, hundreds of millions of people do every night. Yeah. Just a classy glass of scotch. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I guess that's part of the thing that they teach us, you know, um, play the story out, you know, yeah. um, think the drink through that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. but it's, it's true. Well, you know, the, the neat thing when you're saying this is that was the last of part of our conversation the previous time was where we talked about in our active using where we tell the story played out. And, you know, with the right. speed of anxiety or whatever it is or how this situation is going to go. But now we can definitively go, you know, for me, I was a beer guy. I cracked that can, that bottle, 
uh, you know, I know Christmas isn't going to pan out exactly like it is. And we're sitting here talking in April because yeah. I know what will Oh, happen. yeah. You know, I'll show up for Christmas in January and, you know, oh, it's just, it's the, like you said, the fucking snowball's here. It's just, it's going to go bad. There's no, there's no good ending to this scenario. Sure. No, I had this gal that I was seeing for a little bit way back in the day and, and she was a, she was gorgeous and cool and a great artist, you know, and I literally had her paint, um, in a very specific style. I can't think of the artist, but, um, and it was just a, it was a statement and it just said, um, don't overshoot the Super Bowl by another <laughs> Super Bowl because I did. You're talking about Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I had this big party and I didn't really pay attention to the game and then that whole year happened and it was insane and I shouldn't have survived it and still apologizing <laughs> to a lot of the supporting players in that on that journey um, and wound up, you know, at the next Super Bowl party thinking I, I was confused because I was convinced that those same teams should have been playing. I overshot the Super Bowl by another Super Bowl. Because I told everybody, I want to quit partying after the Super Bowl. I got this. And then that happened. Yeah. So, you know, when people say, yeah. I crack a beer and it's Christmas, I get that. Yeah. yeah. I get that. Yeah. Whew. That's me. What Super Bowl was it? <laughs> I just had a I mean, it. the second one. The... Uh, I'm trying to think of the dates. It's probably the Patriots, but who are they playing? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I can't. I can't even. Right. Yeah. If if I sat with it, I could. I, I right, could. Right. I could find it. Yeah. One good question that uh, hit the uh, the YouTube uh, our channel after the, the the last conversation was somebody was curious. Um, you know, it's a lot of love and support. A lot of people definitely, you know, want, you know, two and a half men to come back with you in it. Mm -hmm. How would you see the character of Charlie in that show so different now that you made these changes? <laughs> wow. Um, I, there, there's, there, there's so many ways to go with that. Um, I, I think just to honor the show and, and all the fanfare and, and what people really fell in love with, um, I think he would, you know, you'd have to have that episode where he returns from some epic journey and tells right. Alan's five-page monologue about what happened and all this crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't think he'd do it in a bunch of flashbacks. I think it's just me laying it out. Right. Right in the first scene or the cold open or whatever, you know. Um, and I think maybe there's an intent to you know, make some changes and do things better and really, you know, reattach myself to the family component. And then that, maybe like the next episode, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's out the window. <laughs> and Alan's a drinker, yeah. Um, yeah, um, but I, 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 um, I don't know how they would craft that. Yeah. But I think whatever we presented, people would, 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 would be engaged. Oh my gosh, you know? absolutely. I think, I think they, and I never saw what, whatever my, Final episode, or some cartoon with a piano, or some stuff. I was told, um, but I don't think people would hang on to that as no. as like the stuff that happened on Roseanne, right? Right. Yeah. Where they said, "Well, he can't be alive because didn't somebody have a heart attack?" Or, yeah, uh, or, Dan did. John Goodman. Right, right, right. Character. Okay, yeah. 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 So I think, and everybody forgave that everyone was still there, right? Yeah. They were exactly. like, "Cool, they're back." Exactly. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think he could. Yeah. Um, yeah, whatever, whatever would have to happen for that to take place, I would, I'm, I'm game for. Yeah. You know? Hey, if Marvel Universe can wipe out almost the whole Earth and then bring them back in the next uh, movie, we can do this one. They did that, didn't they? Yes. Yeah. They did a very good snap of a finger. That's all it took. Yeah. <laughs> we can do that. We can have that same character <laughs> show up and be like, the fuck did we have two and a half men cross over with the Marvel Universe, sure. you know? Oh, shoot. Well, we're starting to get a little low on our time, Mikey. Uh, rapid questions? Let's do the rapid questions. Oh, geez. Rapid All right, we got some new ones, though. Okay. We got some new ones for you. So, if you were on... Do we do the deserted island? No, we did not. If you were on a deserted island, and you can take with you one movie and one album. Mm. Which movie and which album? Oh, gosh. Um, and just one of each? <laughs> one oh, of each. Only one? One of each. Um... I would take Apocalypse Now, just because, you, you know, you, 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 
you're seeing that movie in some ways for the first time every time you see it again. Yeah. Um, and it's, I mean, can it be a double album? Yes. It, yeah. Which is yeah. a single I was say, purchase. Yeah. 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 Um, probably the live Zeppelin song remains the same. Love it. Yeah. It was that or Joshua Tree or Let It Be um, or Abbey Road, rather. Um, yeah. But we yeah, but I gotta I gotta go with Apocalypse and the 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 double Zepp. And you can never go wrong with Zeppelin. Everybody in this entire world likes at least one song from Led Zeppelin. Sure. Even yeah. if you don't know that it's them. Sure. There's Zeppelin that you Yeah, because I, I, I feel you on the double albums and I would I would probably go like the Beatles White album. That okay. Was, that was a big Sure. You know, sure. You know, from Guns N' Roses. Hey, yeah, I use your illusion one and two. Yeah, you can count that. Yeah. Even though they well, didn't come out concurrently. Yeah, those no, they didn't come out at the same damn time. So, which I, got? that's interesting that you pick one of your dad's movies. Though. Well, I mean, it's the greatest film ever made, and he just happens to be the star. Yeah, <laughs> true. Know? Well, and I love Francis Ford Coppola. If that guy ever called, look, I just want you to run down the street in a G string. I will be in your movie, Francis. You got it. Because then you have that story forever. <laughs> right? You own that story forever. That's right. That know? was my shit. Oh, man. Um, did we do the superpower one? I'm trying to remember yes. what we all did. That was an older one. My goodness, we had so many. That what was did. mine? Was it Invisibility? I think yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's just like. <laughs> I <please>. mean. <laughs> Walk anywhere with Charlie, and you people see you, and that's what was the first thing I said. Like, does that ever? Do you get used to that, or is that because I can't imagine it? You know, it's you know, um, it, I I think that it, 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 that's all about perception. Sure, you know, and I you know I see people complaining about fame and notoriety, and I'm like, you volunteered for it, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, way back when yeah. you auditioned for that first job, you got it, you kicked ass, it kept going. Yeah. So that that's that's a that's a volunteer exactly. moment, right? Yeah. Um, and then with the way things are and what's going on, and and if you don't if you don't want to get bothered or recognized, don't leave your house. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I'm just like I. You know, because I write, the, like we all do, we write that story about how something's going to go, what's going to happen when we get there. The story's never true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It always goes fine or great, and, and we leave like, why did I spend that energy again yeah. convincing myself that I wasn't going to be able to contribute or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I, most of the situations that I encounter, and not to sound, you know, full of myself, but that... Um, most people are, are, are happy when I arrive sure. and sad when I leave, yeah. you know? Yeah. And that's just, I most people, are. most people, not, not yeah. always. No, <laughs> sure. well, you're... But they're, but they're thrilled to see me and, and, and they, they usually wish I'd, I'd stay longer. You're the highlight of their day. That's cool. That's awesome. That's it cool. So, so that's, sorry to cut you off, no. but that's, that's kind of my experience and how I um, just... I don't want to say deal with it, how I accept it, yeah. you know, and how I view my role in it. If, if you go out and you're immediately, if you're all on, you know, everything's defensive, you know, and, and, and it's like, how do, you, how do you navigate a situation where going into it, you know, you've, you've, you've created all these roadblocks and, and, and you've attached all these, all, just all this fiction that then informs or affects your mindset and, and, you know, before you even get there, you know, if you're already convinced that, oh, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't deserve to have me. Right. And the quicker I'm out, the better. And I don't give a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think it's all about how you prepare yourself for, you know, a variety of, of, of scenarios. Yeah, you see it as almost as an honor it's like a great writer that puts out a book and it's like out of a hundred people two don't like it and they're more pissed off about the two than they are the 98 <laughs> exactly you know? it's exactly like you, you know you had such a great honor of doing it much like with performance art this is a big component that is out there you know? sure this is your tool as an actor here you know Not just what comes out of your mouth but you know so Interesting scenario. I'm drawing blank on the question. That's fine. Go for it. I got one for you. <laughs> okay. So, Charlie, this is the second time we've hung out, man. I kind of feel like we're best friends at this <laughs> point. So, that being said, I would like to commemorate our friendship 
if you would be so kind to write your name down. Okay. I'm gonna get a tattoo. <laughs> Are you sure? I'm gonna there? get a tattoo. Really? Are you it. sure? I called my tattoo artist. He said, "Fucking on it." Bring it, let's do it. I love Charlie Sheen. I'm like, sick. Me too. So wow. I, I mean, no, I'm I'm super flattered. I'm very honored. Um, <laughs> but if it goes bad between us, <laughs> then I'll just put a Day of the Dead skull over it. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Help when she, you already have a contingency plan. I, oh man, That's I got awesome. a couple tattoos. Let me get a sharpie because I want this to be documented. <laughs> uh so there's that. Okay. And just on that piece of paper. Let me just, I'll probably just do. If you could do, yeah. if I could rec just first name on top, second name below, so Ew. it's just be like stacked up Ew. on each other. You know That's what I mean? It's not gonna look right. It's gonna That's be. Not how I'm the do same. Do what you have in your big. mind. What's in your mind? Well, my signature. Um, kind of looks like that. That's pretty clean. I do like that. Even though, see, there's a there's an up swing with the end yeah. of the mm. the end of the end. Right. Um, that's because my hand got stuck on the table. Um, see, if I did it where it doesn't have the same. I I like them both. It's like a. He's got a point. You I know what I'm like saying? With the long like. Um, this is a, to, this is a first. To, so way. you've only got so much room, so much space. Oh no, my legs are no tattoos at all. This is my first leg tattoo. Oh, he's got his ankle shaved for the temple. I shaved, yeah, I shaved a part of my ankle because just so the cameras can catch it, just so there's room right there. Oh, look at that. We're yeah. getting it tattooed either today or tomorrow. It's See, going down. The other. Uh, the sure other one is just the C and the shame. You want the whole thing, right? Yeah. 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 That's why I was thinking print. Because when people see it, they're like, Charlie Sheen, why don't you get Charlie Sheen? And I'm just gonna it's just a hell of a conversation piece. It is a tattoo bit we did. And it's something I'll never <laughs> well, forget. To put this segment only in a small part yeah. of YouTube so people go, what the fuck's on your ankle? Watch. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. Check Got this it. out. <laughs> well, we can work that out. Um, oh, we get a good gracious. one here. Okay, that's pretty good. That is a good one. That's, that's very pretty good. I didn't get the I didn't get the loop in the H though. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Your signature much nicer than mine. I've had a little practice. Oh uh, yeah, this is true. We don't. Right? We just sign things for like you know paying for stuff. I worked in radio for twenty years, Charlie. I've done at least ten autographs. I tell you. <laughs> That's 10 more than most people have, That's right? True. So come on. I'm being a jackass. That one well, we sucks. can deal with your, <laughs> hold we can on, deal hold with on. your signature dilemma. We need to, we want to wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> oh shit. That's it. That's pretty good. That's clean. That's, That's a pretty good one. That's, That's the winner. Forgot to dot the I. I love yeah? it. I love yeah. it. Okay. All right, Let me man. just go back to that very first one. Because sometimes, <laughs> I mean, what, you got to pick it. You got to pick it because it's your name. I'm going to send one. it to Darren and I Darren's like going to send it to you. Right I'm going to get right it done. There. This was the last one? That's the last one. Because it's on the pad, right? Yes. I like that one. Better than that one? I like that one. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That's it. That's it, everyone. Right there. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to send it to Derek because I want you to see it. So I'll send it to him and make sure, hey, Charlie sees this. I got to. All right. That's well, I'm honored. This is this is badass. Absolutely. Wow. I'm honored you took the time to talk to us again. Please. Man. No. Yeah, it's, that was it's, great. A, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Thank um, you for. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry I don't show up here with like, you know, concrete solution about stuff. But hey, no. I don't think that's realistic. No. I think, you know, I don't think this is a one size fits all. You no. know, I think it's it's so. It's 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 so delicately individualized, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and what works for one person may not work for another. Um, but I had a guy, you know, as a sponsor years ago, and he says, "Hey, man, you go to the supermarket, you don't buy everything. Mm -hmm. You walk up and down the aisles, you take what you need, and then and you know that if you need to come back to get different things that that you need that day, it's going to be there. Yeah. yeah and absolutely. if it's and if it's not." Situation dictates. That's yeah. right. Right? Absolutely. Yep. Well, the Marine Corps put it, adapt and overcome. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The same thing. Sure. Yeah. 
No, we appreciate it, Charlie. And we most well, certainly, I don't think anyone looked for that. I think some people, when they, maybe they first start recovery, go, ah, it's just a thing. And I do this turnkey right. and life is good. And, and it doesn't take problems away. Problems are still there. It's just now we can cope. Sure. And we're not angry as much. Right. Everybody gets angry or resentment seems to fade away. Sure. It'll happen. Right. We can, for me, I know I can easily steer the pirate ship in the right direction. Right. You know? Can't change the direction of the wind, but I can adjust my sails, so to speak. That's so, really, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Anything else you want to share with the audience before uh, we wrap it up? We don't know when we'll talk to you again. This is kind of the moment where you are going to be sad to see you go. <laughs> Happy to see you, <laughs> sad to see you go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. My um, brother's like, ask him to come play catch sometime. <laughs> I'm like, I can't even throw a baseball anymore. My arm I'm going to use that too. The water's for fishes, ice for injuries. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he's just saying, bars, you know. <laughs> Um, no, I, I just hope that, you know, either intentionally or accidentally something that, 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 that we unearthed something here, something cool that, that, you know, like we said, if, if, if we help one person, then, yeah. then we've, we've left behind something good. Absolutely. You know? And if that person then helps another and, you know, it's, I guess it's about that, uh, communal transfer you yeah, know uh, I can't say that during a pandemic um, <laughs> no just about you know it's, it's interesting you, you you never know who you're gonna reach yeah. and and how you're gonna reach them and through through what means you know that's that's the beauty of the uh, of, of the mystery of it all yeah. you know um, I get I get you know I get fan mail that I read and something that I did or said or forgot about like had a profound effect on somebody mm. you know and they were able to to you know overcome this really difficult thing because of something that i didn't you know leave behind intentionally mm -hmm. you know but i think that's part of just walking the good path yeah Great. you know yeah or staying on the the, you know the the parts of that path that that, that we know to be stable. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say safe, just stable. Stable, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Charlie. Thank no, you, thank Charlie. you. Yeah, this was great.